Hi there, it's Brian Sabota from Blue Cap Productions. I'm here overlooking Diamond Head here in the background in lovely Honolulu, Hawaii. And it's a beautiful June morning, 2022. And I'm very happy to announce that after a two year hiatus, the St. Marie show is on. So we are about to head out to the airport right over there, hop on a plane and go in search of what's hot in St. Marie. Why don't you join us? We'll see you there. C'est un grand plaisir de te revoir. Uh, we are here with Thomas Velikam, Hi. who is now running this show. Yes. Uh, and uh, it's just absolutely wonderful to mm -hmm. be back after so many years yes. of, of COVID of disaster. Yes. And uh, I think it's been very difficult for you to, to get things going again. And yes. uh, maybe you can tell us a few things about, uh, you know, how the organization yes. has operated. It's true that the last edition was 2019. So after this show, it was a hutch show and we say, okay, we're waiting 2020 for the, the next show. And in March, unfortunately, the COVID uh, came. And at the beginning we said, okay, it's one or two months. Um, our show is not in danger, so we will organize it. And months after months, day after day, we see that unfortunately we cannot uh, organize a show so for us uh, we were very sad for of course the organization was uh, this was very sad and uh, for for the show for the dealer for the for the and local the pub, and yeah, the public, public too yeah it was a, a disaster for us and we said in 2020 we said okay we do not organize a show but next year we will do it and unfortunately we have a, a lot of uh, wave and Day after day, months after months. Unfortunately, 2021 it was uh, impossible too. We were working hard on finding some solution, but unfortunately, we have to cancel it a second time. And now we are. You see, the sun is here, and uh, we have a beautiful weather for this year. Uh, the exhibitors are find uh, this edition fantastic. We have a lot of visitors. Uh, we never see uh, a lot of uh, people yeah. as, uh, this year. So I think that we are going, we are now. Back back in full force. Yes. The number of people wandering around is just absolutely yes. amazing to yeah. me. But uh, it's also a good thing that the French meteorologist maybe make some mistakes mm -hmm. because Earlier, they predicted rain all week, and yeah. <laughs> it's been quite nice. But your your story is, yes. is also amazing. I yes. Mean, you've been coming to this show since you were, what, 11, 12 years yes. old? As I, as I explained on uh, the What's Hot when they do a special uh, a special season during the COVID-19, right. remember, remember I was with my phone just here in front of the theater, I, and I saw... Uh, I, I, I had the opportunity to, to, to make you discover the show without the tents. Without all the tents. Everything tents. was empty. It was uh, absolutely strange for you, but... Uh, Maybe a me, little uh, sad, too. For myself, I am born here, so I, I grew up here. And when you are in Sainte Marie, when you are at the school of, of Sainte Marie, you are in association, different association. And I start the show. My first show was uh, just in, uh, in front of the theater in the in the CL area and right, I, was, right. I was uh, working for uh, the restoration uh, for my college mm -hmm. so that was my first experiences after I go in another association for the thing and I was in gem when uh, the gem okay. area opened I was in charge of the entrance and when did gem open uh, in 2004 in 2004 uh, okay yes. very good yeah and after in in 2011, 12, 
Uh, there is a story with the two show, one in Colmar and one right, in Saint Marie. That's and right. uh, Claude Abel say uh, we th this show must keep continue must continue in Saint Marie. And uh, I was uh, one of the first person who were uh, with uh, with the mayor to support him uh, to Cla organize the Claude show. Claude Abel, yes, yes. Claude yeah. Abel, yes. And unfortunately, now it's not. It's it's another mayor. It's a wife. It's a young young young, young woman, wife. Yeah. Yes, young woman. But um, she's uh, she's very. She absolutely supports the show, and it's important for the for Saint Marie and for uh, every exhibitor as as for right. the public. The show will stay in Saint Marie, and this is the most uh, I, I remember, important. I, yeah, I remember when the show was moved to Colmar mm -hmm. for that one year mm -hmm. and. I, I, Saint Marie is such a better environment. Colmar is is just a, a city, uh, no excitement mm -hmm. compared to Saint Marie. The culture here is mm -hmm. much better, and then you know with people like you who are so enthusiastic, and obviously you're you're uh, the success story yeah. of Saint Marie, starting as a <laughs> a young boy collecting scrap minerals that people of were course. leaving around and yes. now you're the big boss. Yes, it's, it's a it's a beautiful story and I'm very proud. I I I will not uh, hide to you that uh, this edition 2 year after uh, with a new new people, new partnership uh, for the for the ten construction, the security uh, we have a new uh, team uh, by the local authorities that make okay. us a, a big, um, a big uh, size of stress. Mm -hmm. And now we see the show. We see that we have a lot of visitors. The exhibitors are happy. We are very proud of uh, our exhibition, and uh, everyone is uh, very happy. And yeah. uh, for us, it's uh, the it's very. Yes, it's, uh, we are very proud very of this proud. edition. Well, and, and you should be because yeah. you've done a fantastic mm -hmm. job. Thank you. I'm personally thrilled that you're now in yes. charge. You know, I've always liked you from the first time yes. I've met you. You were very helpful when I made a presentation, mm -hmm. a conference yes. here once. And uh, it's absolutely thrilling to be back. And uh, we're really looking forward to next year. I'm sure you will do something yes. even better because <laughs> we will try and you are very, very good at what you do. So thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. And thank you uh, to Eric and uh, Brian to, to, to make the to make us the opportunity to come in uh, Saint Marie for realizing uh, the, the video. So thank you very much. And thank you uh, to to see this uh, this video of Saint Marie, and I hope that you will enjoy this show by uh, these pictures and this video. Yes. Thank you, Brian. We're very very much enjoyed it so far. I'm thrilled. So it's good. All right. Well, hello, Ian. It's great to see you again. At last, yes, Saint Marie. Yes. We We're missed here. it for two years, and I we're know. back again. That's wonderful, and yeah. I can see everybody's very enthusiastic, and um, so that's always a good part. This show just really has an, an aura around it that you don't have anywhere else so but uh, you have crystal classics and i'm sure you want to show us some wonderful pieces yeah we uh, i think uh, i think it's like our 31st year here in the theater i can't believe it time has flown by and um it's just it's so nice to be back you know three years two years no summary mm -hmm. and we're back and it's just like we never left all right. So, so all our French friends and uh, European friends and, uh, you know, a few guys from across the pond, it's been, um, it's been a good show. Good. So we do have a few things to show you. It's been, all right. um, since, since the Tucson show, it's been incredibly busy for us. Some new finds from, uh, from Brazil, um, some great new finds from our mine in Weirdale in England, um, and some good collections. Uh, last week, the, the last three weeks, I was in Germany, and we wrapped six brand new collections Wow. Which are, you know, thousands of specimens which will be cleaning and prepping and getting ready for um, getting ready for the, uh, the Denver show, I guess, is next. That's right. So it's, um, you know, very, very busy. We'll be shipping them all to Tucson, to the Tucson Fine Mineral Gallery. Um, we're having an open day there in August. So everybody will be getting invitations for that. Um, things are busy. Very good. Things are busy. Well, better busy than not, that's yeah. for sure. So I've got a few... A few, right. a few teasers for Let's you from see. the new collections. Yes. As you know, Crystal Classics, Classic Minerals, we, uh, you know, we don't just have 
fluorites and aquamarines and tourmalines for sale. We have. But you do have all of that. Oh, we do have well. all of that yes. as well. We have all the good classic minerals from the, the, the ancient mines of Europe. And uh, um, in this cabinet, it's a prime example. A lot of good French things here. You know, when, when you're in France, you must sell French minerals. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, this is, uh, this is a nice little thing. This is from Saint Marie Oh, my something, God. Something you never see. So in, in Saint Marie, of course, the mining started 500 or more years ago. Yeah. And uh, the, it's called the Val d'Argent, the Silver Valley. Yeah, and this and, is the uh, reason why this right finely here. crystallized native silver. Look at that from Saint Marie. Something something you never see. Very very different looking from the Konsberg silver. Yeah, Absolutely. very different. Yeah. Nice little and so uh, crystals do you, and. Do you have any idea when this particular piece was mined? No idea, but the mines have been closed, I guess, for yeah, way over a hundred years yes, now. And, yes, yes. Uh, this is just, a, you know, it's just nice to have something you never see. Absolutely. Nice Sam will mean uh, native silver. And then one of the other real classics from France that everybody knows. Chassis. Chassis. The blue mine, as it's called informally, and uh, that's also been closed for a very long time. Uh, Denis Boel and the club in Chessy uh, get to go through the dumps there, but uh, Denis told me that they haven't found anything decent in a few years. Yeah, um, no, it's, uh, look at the crazy iridescence um, on this. It's, yeah, uh, it is. And, and the, what's the old label, look at that. Right. What's interesting to me on this piece is normally you find more of the balls with, you know, the, but this is like a nice cavity. Yeah, the, in, the inside of a ball, look at that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's nice. Uh, something else great from France, you know, you can't believe it. That's French. Oh my. Is, is uh, that, it's not from La Gardette, is no, it? It's no, from, it's from Brittany. From Brittany. Okay. Yeah. Completely the opposite side of France. I feel how heavy that is. But that, that is really a massive piece. Yeah. Because La Gardette did not produce much um, gold at all, actually. It produced lovely specimens. But uh, this is very, very nice. And is it, this is an old one as well, or? Yeah, we picked this up in a, a collection recently. It's um, just incredibly rich for France. It's, uh, I don't know the history. It's, uh, it's something new for me, but okay. it's a you know, fabulous thing. This I want to show you, this I love. You know, the, the, um, the Spanish pyromorphites are just, you know, they're just, just great From things. southern Spain, yeah. yeah. El Hocasio. Look at the old label. Oh, this. and you have the old labels with them, that. of That's course. fabulous. That is fantastic. Mm. Yeah, the, the sparkle on these is completely different than anywhere else. And it's almost, it's, you know, a little, much more prismatic than many other localities on this specimen. And again, dating so. from the, the early, mid-1800s. Very, very old specimens. And, very um, rarely we get one. What it what is uh, the matrix here or It'd this is the matrix yeah. some lemonite yeah okay wow so that's uh, that's our first little cabinet of classics we move on to the next one which again is uh, is very classic based uh, what's uh, what's interesting this is lovely I'm really happy with this this is one of the great British classics from the Hilton mine. From the Hilton mine, this is yeah. absolutely gemmy crystals, perfectly formed. It's like this is wonderful. The best, best color. Somebody um, froze pure honey. Yep, yeah. this is the best, best it's color. Really, Just really deep, really deep, great. deep. And the Hilton mine has produced some lovely pieces. That's for sure. Yeah, this yeah. is one of the nicer ones I've ever had. It's um, it's just beautiful, beautiful, so, beautiful. Somewhat typical from that area of England are these penetration twins. We see that in some of the other mines as well. I know that Deanna Maria and the Roger Lee mines had these penetration twins. And here you have, I see little fan, little phantom, it looks like on the edge. Yeah. Yep, typical wow. of Hilton. Really, really nice. Mm, beautiful, beautiful. So everybody always asks us, have you got a good Hilton? Have you got a good Hilton? And very rarely can we say yes. And but now uh, you can. No, no, we can't. Excellent. Not for long. That won't, that won't stay around for long. I would imagine that'll disappear quickly. Yeah, that's, a, that's a great thing. Uh, this is nice. This is from a, a collection we bought recently. This is from uh, 
from Zillatal. Lovely, lovely old labels. Look at this. Dating from the, the late 1800s. Wow. Look at that. Beautiful and pretty large. You know, you, yeah. you see large Great things color. like this in South America, but in, in Europe, many of the amethysts seem to be much, much smaller, especially the French ones I've seen. But um, once you get into the Germanic, Austrian realm, uh, things get much, much better. Yeah, for European Alpine amethyst, that's, uh, you know, that's, that's a nice That's spectacular. One. Yeah, very, very good thing. As, uh, as so, you'll know, over the last years, we've worked very heavily in Brazil and um, we've had some of the best things out of Brazil um, from the from the Curamel, Curamel Murta district. Okay. Um, a couple of new finds. This is uh, this is new. These are lovely. This Whoa. is from Aquabranca. Well, being a tourmaline collector, I'm very, very appreciative of especially matrix pieces and, and a piece with two parallel independent completely independent crystals yeah and of course the lapidolite and some albite as well yeah yeah the crazy nice terminations crazy world of so this is your production basically well, it's not our production but it's uh, you know basically straight from the mine straight from yeah. the mine okay yeah and this is colonel murta look at the colors on these things this is uh some of the prettiest, prettiest tourmalines we've, we've seen with these crazy colors. Large doubly terminated. No, not quite doubly no. terminated, but nice pinacoid termination on there. And, you know, good, good size crystal for sure. Incredible transparency. Yeah, I love the, the coloring. It just seems to fade from it's one lovely. into the other. All right. And uh, this is an, a, one of the new, new finds. So this was, uh, this was a few months ago. Uh, Colonel Murta again. Mm -hmm. um, great, great combinations. Extremely pretty. Yeah, and this is like a bluish green cap on top of a long red prism. I'd say probably eight, eight, nine centimeter crystal with a little one on the side at an angle, giving it a great aesthetics and the smaller little pieces. Again, Clevelandite and Lepidolite. This is very appealing, very yeah. appealing. Beautiful, beautiful. The Lepidolite beautiful. growing up the, the large tourmaline crystal. Let's give you a special treat here. Okay. So this, uh, this is... Oh, the secret box. Oh, one of the secret boxes. Let's have a look. So this, these are lovely. This is fresh from... Uh, from Diana Maria. Oh, that, speaking of penetration twins, yeah. there they are. And of course, the beauty of these is they are so fluorescent that they turn blue out in the sunlight. This whole thing would be pretty vivid blue. Oh, absolutely. But even here, you can already see it. And uh, the, it's really rare to get a giant twin like that sat in this, uh, this bed of... Yeah, the geometry ones, is, is uh, just absolutely fantastic. Yeah, this is a nice collar, and and it seems that a huge number of these crystals are penetration twins themselves. And then, yeah, wow, very very nice. This is uh, mainly German in here. Okay, so, so very very popular. Obviously, we're close to the German border. Many many German clients come over, and uh, you know these uh, these minerals are very very popular. And then the other day I was talking to Deanna and saying, well, since you're of German origin, you collect the German minerals and Ian collects the, the British classics. So. This wow. is just wonderful. Look at this for a, a manganite flower. It's, uh, it's just magnificent. So is this from Ilfeld or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, uh, wow. it's just a great specimen. Just, just f f almost impossible to get a really, really nice uh, manganite. And this is, this well, is just and it, it just radiates yeah, very in all directions. And of course, being manganite, it's rather dense, but um, lustrous terminations. The crystals are really spectacular. 
Yeah, for anyone who wants a nice small cabinet uh, manganite, that is it. You know, you're not going to be, it's going to be very difficult to get better than that. Well, I can see why you say that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wonderful. For the size, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, it's lovely. Thank you. As I mentioned, over the last three weeks, we've wrapped, we've wrapped six new mineral collections, in, uh, all, all of them from Germany. Um, fabulous, fabulous new things. Uh, everything from German classics to, uh, to American classics. Um, one, one, one of the collections I actually made an offer on 14 years ago, and uh, we, we just got it last week. And you just finally yeah? got so it. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing. Sometimes you just have to be patient. And, um, and persistence. This is just a teaser. This is a All small right. teaser of what's uh, what's going to be coming in the uh, Crystal Classics Gallery in Tucson over the next um, over the next month, as we get things processed. These these specimens are just lovely. They uh, they sum up um, the good taste of the man that uh, that collected them back in this you know back in the eighties I guess seventies and eighties. Uh, he was very active collecting in. Um, Sumer. He was actually working in Sumer, Ooh, but he collected. He collected this, really this nice minerals. Pink smithsonite. Oh my God! This is just spectacular. What a lovely thing, eh? Yeah, it's it's like it's almost a um, a marriage between botryoidal structure and and fully crystalline structure. Mm, big carbuncles. And, of yeah, and a nice Cobaltian smithsonite. How about that? Yeah. And in this collection, there are about a thousand specimens, uh, many of them this quality. So it's going to be very exciting to get um, to get all this ready for market. Yeah, and this this just sits perfectly well like this. Well, this would grace any collection, I would say. Yeah, isn't it lovely? So that's one. Um, this is this is. Do you know, I've I've handled tens of thousands of sumo things over the years and this is um possibly the nicest blue willow mite i've ever had Ooh! look at that my goodness very yeah. few good ones lovely, very, very little, few good lovely ones. little balls of will my goodness i'm at a loss for words on this this is yeah, and it's perfect. It's just, uh, just lovely, lovely, lovely yeah. thing. Good size too. Really yep. good size. Perfect cabinet size. All right. Well, oh. give you this one back. That one back, and this will be our last specimen for today. All right. And this is uh, another sumeb thing. Yes, this is. Uh, Wonderful, wonderful cyclic uh, cerusite. Cerusite, yeah. yeah. Get this with a coating, a preferential coating so, of um, of this tan smithsonite. Great, great specimen. Yeah. Again, just shows the taste of this guy. Very, very, very fine, well chosen sumer greatness. Yeah, lovely, 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 lovely. Really appreciate you showing us these yeah, uh, wonderful minerals. It's a pleasure. And, uh, Look forward to seeing what you will bring us next time. Yes. All right. Thanks so much. Okay. Here again, it's What's Hot in Sainte Marie 2022 with Laszlo Kupi of uh, Fine Mineral Photography. Laszlo, nice wonderful to, to see you today. Hi, guys. I have something special for you, but it's a very limited find. The only piece exists. Yeah. Okay. And it's from California. From California, a new find yeah, in new California. Find from California. Okay. And the only existing piece. Well, this is going Can to I be open the box? Absolutely. Can't so, wait to please. see what you have. Okay. It's a very brittle piece, very fragile. Okay. And the color and the luster you will see is just. Oh popping. my goodness. <laughs> Wow! <laughs> the only existing Lego crosite. Lego Lego crosite. That yes. is just superb material. Look I've, at the color. I, the, I the tell you, it's deep perfect, red cherry perfect color. cubes. This is just amazing. It's I supposed mean, to be oh, the rhombohedron, but yeah, but it's close we enough. We have some limitation. Yeah. 
and actually designed by Dario de Frate. He's a Spanish okay, guy. Yes, yes. And the project of Lego Minerals is on the way to become true. So please talk about it. Oh, absolutely. And so th this is something I would love to have, but it's a one of a kind piece. So I know I can't afford one, it. It's the only one, but it's something everyone can afford because this quality of rhodochrosite, you probably, well, very we limited. We dream of yeah, this exactly. color. I do, actually. But that's about it. So the, the rhodos with the quartz <laughs> on, on the tetrahedrite matrix. Yeah, exactly. Some so nice it's quartz. a perfect, perfect sweet home Absolutely. piece. But it's from Lego. It's from Legoland. Calabasas, <laughs> California. Yeah. Fantastic. Laszlo, this is great. Thank you. Really, for really want to thank you so much you. for sharing this with us. All right. Hi. Hello, Jordi. Nice so nice you. to see you after in so much time. My, yes. My single show because I quit all shows in the world. That's and right. I am staying in Samari because I love this place. I love this show. So I mm. decided to do this show. You have done this show for a very long time, 40 For, years, I think. 40 yes, years. Yes, yes. Yes, starting That's in, wonderful. when I had 25 years. I am 65. 65 so now. 40 years, yeah. All right. Well, yeah. I'm still older than you, so. Well, uh, <laughs> I, I can tell you congratulations, but yes. uh, in my That's case, good. I am probably too long in the mineral business, and I want to take a little better timing for me. Mm -hmm. means a slow a little bit, keeping my web page very active as always, yes. but not doing shows as I did in the past, yeah. but keeping the show. It's yeah. a wonderful place. And your web page is good. I must Thank compliment you, you on that. Thank so you very much. Very we good. work yeah. hard on it and we and try uh, to do our best. It's good. my future in also. Yes, because that's right. Keeping, uh, leaving the shows, uh, web page is uh, it's really my future. Good. So I hear you have some yeah. Nice new pieces you want to show yes, us. Yes, I have a toy for you. You have a do toy? Do you want that toy? Sure, to I love toys. Like a kid. Toys are great to play with. And how long do you want to play with it? Millions of years? Or well, just five I don't years? know. Maybe Brian doesn't give me that much time. No? Oh, a pity. Because you can play with this toy forever. Let me okay, show you what I am talking about. Let's see what you have. Okay. This is, for the moment, something simple. Oh. Fluoride. It's okay. Fluoride. Yeah, it's this... not a toy. But so the fluorite has a toy inside. Take but the piece. this is a Laviesca piece, yes, right? Yes, sir. Okay, with calcopyrite. Yes. But, but look inside. What do I see? And move oh. the piece. Oh, there's, there's a bubble in there. Many bubbles. And it can go different places. Oh, it comes up into here. Yes. And then we can go there. Oh, yeah. That's, that's pretty amazing. But... Usually you have small bubbles in a little space. Yeah. This one, it looks like it can travel a very long distance. Uh, and in many and different shapes. In different directions. They take many different small channels and it Gosh. breaks the big bubble or reunify the big bubble in one single bubble. So this forms, this. well, usually it looks like there's a cleavage plane in yeah, there. But not open cleavage inside, which is extremely rare for fluoride. So in all my life, I probably moved over 10,000 fluorides or even more, and I never saw a bubble inside fluoride because by the con uh, condition formations, uh, they uh, have no chance to have bubbles inside because the breaks goes out very easily mm. and break out. And then the, you that get rid of the it's water. It's really closed inside and maintains the gas or the bubble inside and moving all around during millions of mm. years. That's why and I say to you that you can have that toy forever. And this is a big floater. This is uh, yes. yeah, yeah. yeah, it's, it's a, a nice, pocket, piece, nice yes. pocket crystal with calcopyrites yeah. on it that adds a little sparkle. Yes. So it's a, it's a shiny toy. So it's a nice it's Christmas a toy. toy. And also it's some historical toy because it's one of the last finds in the very famous La Viesca Mine. La Viesca. La Viesca Mine closed in November to tw uh, 21. And oh. it will never work again for what the people say. And before the mine closed, that piece and another piece I will show you later down the table. Okay. Go, comes out giving the glory of that mine even higher because those pieces are really magnificent. This one by the bubbles and the other one you'll see. 
And and very large too. I mean, I've oh, seen wait, a lot of Lavies. Wait to see very large. You'll okay, see very large. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful, Jean Thank, Thank you. you very much. Before to continue with the large things from La Viesca, let me show you something from Morocco. Oh, I know that Banadinite is not a big word, but in this case, it is a big Banadinite. You okay. will see why. Let me and pick up with my hands. So Morocco is probably the main location for Vanadinite no in the that. world. And uh, so I... I Oh my gosh. Have you seen that? This is unbelievable. Have you seen the, the size of these crystals? And the architecture of the wall piece with this slight matrix, the shape of the crystals, uh, some reflect the jemmy if you light with a powerful light mm, on the corner. I see. And some red reflex also. And the and size. It's a and little the bit shape. skeletal as well in some places, but exactly. these are very blocky crystals. They. If you consider this the normal hexagonal shape and you see this size and this size, I mean, these are really big. 4.5 centimeters. 4.5 centimeters. Which the, is really huge. That is. Yeah. That's almost two and, inches. And the wall combo make a spectacular... Uh, the arrangement, like, yeah. The arrangement, the, the, yeah. As you said, the architecture of the yes. piece really makes it spectacular. That comes from Kudia, one of the famous uh, places from Morocco, okay. which uh, uh, usually is famous by the color of the vanadinites, the reddish ones. Oh, yes, and yes. not for the sharp crystals and mm -hmm. not for that red-black ones, but that area is so rich that every place can give everything. Yeah. As this one coming from a place which usually don't give that kind of vanadinite, but yes, this time searching by people, just digging holes and doing every kind of research and available to make money, they can find everything. The miners, like they're all small scale. They dig their own tunnels by hand. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. really artisanal mining. Yes, it's, yes. It's and not dangerous. Big. And, and yes, dangerous. they may have collapses yeah. because the, yeah. uh, the rock there is very friable. Yes, it is. And they need money and that pay a lot of money, so yes. the risk they take, uh, sometimes they justify it. Yes. Because uh, first of all, that's a miracle. They gave mm -hmm. to us the gift to see something so fantastic from the nature. And second one, it could help someone to live the rest of his life, him and the family. And his family, yeah. Forever, you know, just what, with one find like this. So we can't avoid the to go there and dig and search. Yeah, I understand. and. It's, and it's for us yes. on the collecting end, of course, it's absolutely amazing when pieces like this come around. I have probably seen 10,000, 20,000 Vanadinites, many from you. Thank you. Um, and then this is unique. It is. This is... Uh, it is the larger crystal size I never had. And yeah. it's the la larger group with big crystals I never had. As, as I remember, Lord Wilbur would say, this is an important piece. <laughs> Holy to God. use his words, yes. Uh, using but his words, I will say the same. Yes. <laughs> wow. Thank you so okay. much for sharing this with us, John. My pleasure. And now let me show you the hidden pieces. So, as usual... Under the table. You must the dive. Table. Yeah, exactly. One of them is the larger fluorite I mentioned it before from oh, La Viesca, from, La Viesca as from the well. same fine as this one. Okay. It's, it's different, not bubbles. No bubbles. But you'll see. Okay. It's always a pleasure to see the treasures that Jordi pulls out. I've always been amazed uh, by the material that he has, so That's we're very heavy. fortunate. But I will hold for you. It must be heavy because it's Jordi heavy. is dragging it on the floor. <laughs> it's heavy and big. You'll see. That's the label. Okay. Mined in 2021 on the last mounts of 2021. Let me open the... Oh my goodness. Crates. Let me show you the fluorite. That's an incredible treasure. It is. Can you the, lift it okay? Yeah, yes I can. Okay. I am old, but uh, not that not old. So old. Not okay. that old. <laughs> Looks that. 
Oh my goodness gracious. And I guess you can tell it's from the same find with the calcopyrites on it. The same well. find. Slightly different color though. It looks yeah, like. a yeah. little bit different. And little quartzes as well. The size of the larger cube is 15 centimeters. 15 centimeters on 15. edge. It's 15. a floater, of course. Yes. And can you hold it? Yes, you can? sure. I think you so. You are older than me. Take care. Oh, oh. <laughs> yes, I have it. You got it? Wow. This is really amazing. I will not need to do any more exercise today after <laughs> holding this piece. That is just absolutely fantastic. And these edges, the modification, the yeah. etching. It's the rhombo de decaedron face yeah. on the edges. It's typical from that area, as well as the chalcoperite. And as many pieces from that area, the color change they light. We are lucky okay. that we will help you. Okay. And you will see the color changes okay. from the LED light, that color, okay? Oh. But let me move the piece to the sun, to the light, so daylight, is going more blue, the color it changes dramatically. You can see the color change, it's mm -hmm. kind of blue, yes. light blue, sea blue. Now it looks more like the other one. Before exactly. it had a greenish, a more greenish tint. Exactly, as many fluorides, the kind of light change the color. The better color of this, in my opinion, is daylight, as now. And Maybe if you step back, you can get more daylight. The, over here. That's so, sunlight. Too much. Probably too much, but we'll we'll check. Yeah, oh, even better. And uh, spots, the spots of the chalcopyrite are more shiny, making even more contrast with the blue of the fluorite. <coughs> That's a huge fluorite, and it's the last gift from La Viesca before die. I remember years ago, I picked up a few pieces from you in Barcelona, uh -huh. and uh, I, I treasure them, I, I have them Are still, you? and they're really wonderful pieces. Are you happy with them? Oh, still? very happy. Great. At the time, they were cheap. The prices grows up mm -hmm. a lot. Yes. And right now, after the end of the mine, probably they will even grow up higher because the fluorides from that mine are extraordinary as you can see. Well, and you can only you'll only be able to get them from other collectors yes. in the future. Correct. Look at that. Silver minerals? That's a chalcosite. Chalcosite. Oh my gosh. Have you seen the chalcosite, the crystal size? Not this big before. It's among the world's best chalcosites from Spain. And, and it's from Spain. It is from Spain. Wow. From That's Las Cruces mine. Las Cruces, Cruces mine. It's a kind of uh, copper and other uh, slight elements mine, working mostly for massive uh, chalcosite. Mm -hmm. And it gave uh, 90. Uh, excuse me. Uh, in the 2019. Uh, some pockets, that's the best, of course, from those pockets. And this is in southern Spain? It's on the it's southern in Spain. Andalusia. Andalusia. Yeah. And now it's closed. Not anymore. So they you're... will continue maybe searching for copper, but on mine, mining, mm, not, right. not uh, an open pit. So you're very fortunate. You seem to always get these treasures right before mines close. That's really, that's a very lucky situation. I was extremely happy to get this, as you can imagine. And mm -hmm. yes, it was a lucky time for I me. I think you have somebody looking over you all the time, maybe. Sure. Wow. Many, many gods are looking for me. There you go. Yes. But I mean, these are two centimeter crystals, some of them. 2.5. 2.5, the biggest ones. The biggest ones, yeah. So that's really impressive. This is a species that usually forms much smaller crystals uh, yeah. or just massive, which is not so interesting Less for shock us. many times. Yeah. Some damage frequently because it's a soft uh, material, easily right. can be damaged, scratched or broken. Mm -hmm. And also some white calcite, as you can see on the top. Oh, right here. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that so adds a little bit of that's uh, contrast to the Let piece. Me turn, and then you will see another vision of the piece with the calcite on the bottom and the oh, right. sides on the top. Two different visions little, of the same. Yeah, little same area of small crystals surrounded by these much larger, and they're so lustrous too. Well, that's the point. Let me tell you something. That could be much, much, much brilliant if I use some chemical product 
but then the patina will be will gone out mm. and then it will be come back to blackish a long time after a while so yeah the good news at least for me of this is this i don't touch it just as the piece was found and it has natural brilliance to it the natural brilliance that has the natural patina protecting the crystals to become uh, black yeah preventing from preventing. to change to black yeah what uh, that's the thing that many chalcosides those that's right. So I am very happy. Don't have, done did nothing with the chemical products to make the piece nicer, shiner, more brilliant because that will be very easy. But then after the time, the color will come back to that or even mm. nicer. Wow, this is a, an absolutely amazing piece. Another fine treasure brought to you by Jordi Fabo, who's uh, been doing this for a very long time. I remember him telling me stories of having some difficulties with the Spanish police when he was young, oh, yeah. trying to get to Portugal, yes. and they don't like this Catalan boy no. traveling over there. But, no, uh, not at all. He's obviously done very well and succeeded in, in avoiding <laughs> the Spanish police in those days. Avoiding many polices from many places in the world, yes. as many dealers do. Yes, that's Because correct. this is a strange business that the police people don't understand very well. Mm, and they and wonder what you're doing. And yeah, They don't exactly. like it. And yes. When they open the, the car and they found down, uh, 100 kilos of rocks, that's very strange for them. Yes. I can understand, yes. yeah. Well, thank you so much, Jordi. This My is pleasure. a spectacular material. Thank you very much. My pleasure. So much. Always uh, a pleasure to see you again. Always a pleasure to meet you in Samari. Yes. The place for the best minerals and for the best food. Oh, uh, that's right. Good know, food. Well. That's right. Other times we still see you walking around at the other shows and okay. just buying and uh, okay. doing things. You will uh, see me in still Munich travel. buying. You will see me in other shows buying, uh, like a small shows where sometimes you can find good things, good deals. Yeah. But my age to be exhibitor in the main shows it's it's finished, it's finished now. but i keep somebody yes well i'm we're very happy that you Me do too. good good thank okay. you so much again thank you so much all right hello michel ça fait plaisir de te revoir hi 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 so, how are you très bien, nice to very see good. you again nice to see you. and uh, uh, we are free now yes and after Two years of Two years absence, uh, we're punishment. here with Michel Cabrol of Merveille de la Terre, which means marvels of the earth. And that really describes the minerals that uh, Michel and his lovely wife Claudette uh, provide to the world. And he has some special new finds for us this year. Uh, these are some uh, nice calcites from France. And I'm going to let uh, Michel describe them a little bit to you. Yes. That is a new find in, uh, in France, in Southwest. They are calcite. Not aragonite. Aragonite calcite. It's calcite. Mixed. Some, pre some parts are calcite, some parts are aragonite. You can see that one and that one, very nice. And they came from that carry. Uh, the owner of the carry was so intelligent when he, he opened with dynamite and they are working for pavement and when they opened the pocket he called to guy and asked him you can pick up all the calcite before I, I have to, because to he, wreck. Right, before he wrecks the place. Yes, this yes. is a construction material yes. quarry. Yeah. So we've seen some similar formations from other countries, yes. but this is the first time you've seen this in France? No, we had in the past in the gold mine of uh, uh, Salsigne. Salsigne, okay. the old department, uh, close of Carcassonne. Mm -hmm. But now the mine is closed a long time ago, and they cross pocket of uh, aragonite, mm -hmm. some were blue in the past, Okay. because uh, it was copper in the mine. But these are extremely fragile, and the fact that they survived the explosion from the quarry yes, yes. is pretty amazing. It's a miracle, because to, to go, you can see on the, on the picture, the whole of the, the geode 
is very, very small. Mm -hmm. And uh, my friend has to, to go inside to take the, to off to the, collect the material the, to collect the material and don't break. That yeah, these incredible. are really lovely yes. pieces. To carry it, it's okay. We have boxes. But yeah, we always love the the architecture, the structure of these calcite aragonites. They they look like trees. They look like corals. They look like anything but what you would normally expect from a a crystalline uh, mineral specimen. So it's an absolute pleasure to see them, uh, and, and particularly such good quality pieces. And of course, being somewhat patriotic, the fact that they're from France is, is even better. Okay, uh, Michel, you also have some other yes. things from another part of the world oh, that yes. you want to share with us? I have some uh, very nice uh, toupees from Pakistan. Okay. And I can show you. Yes, please. Okay. They are all double terminated crystals with uh, albite, like this. You can see the shape. Oh, really that nice, nice cherry color. Uh, I have some other here, like this. So the, the complexes, they have Clevelandite as well. And then there's one I see with fluorite. And then there's another that one. That one is nice too, with fluorite, albite. Oh, it's complete. And that one is with manganotantalite here. The color is wonderful. So it these are like a cognac. One more. Oh, it's complete. So, uh, Michel. I want to thank you again for I thank you always for sharing your, your wonderful minerals with us. And, and uh, we hope to meet you in yeah. Tucson. Yes, we'll definitely Tucson. see you in Tucson again. Okay, here we are with um, Jose Correa. Jose, yeah. nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Jose works with uh, uh, Luis Burillo um, and he's going to show us uh, a few nice pieces that uh, they have brought here to Saint Mario Min. Yes. Um, Louis. Okay, Say, we're going to start with a very nice uh, and special fluorite from La Viesca. So La Viesca is a mine that has recently closed. Um, I don't know how long ago this piece came. This piece came just right before the Tucson show this year. Okay, okay it's a very nice piece, very aesthetic. So it's got the structure. With a combination of the quartz and the calcite. Just the color is so very, very nice. Calcite up here and the quartz is down yes. here. Uh -huh. And then the modified edges, which is very typical. Yeah. From La yes, yeah. yes. But the color zonation is very interesting to me on this one. It looks like there's some changes as you go inside yes, yes, the crystal. Yes, and different lighting just brings out different colors. It's just a very special uh, piece. So the, this mine right. has produced some very Some wonderful pieces. Yes, yeah. yes. A lot of fluoride came out of this mine, but just a lot of it uh, came damaged. You know, it was very hard to get very special pieces. Is you know? that is that because the miners only are mining for ore? Yes. Not yes. because they don't know how. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Yes. So many so just, many mines, the owners do not want specimen collecting. They yes. want to work yes. fast. Yes. Yes. They don't care about this. Uh, but precious things that of course come out of we do so yes. we much prefer to of course. see pieces like this of course and uh yeah i'm really really happy you could show us yes. this one jose very nice piece very All nice right. piece. wonderful you have uh, a piece from panasquera in portugal yes and as you know panasquera has produced many many different things a lot of material has come out from panasquera 
but it's just a very wonderful and phenomenal piece. So you have appetite, ferberite, and arsino pyrite. Yes. yes, yes. Very, just the crystals of the ferberite are just very, very, very nice. Very nice quality. You see the fluorapatite. The luster is, is incredible. Yes, yes. These fer a lot of ferberites are not so bright sometimes. Yes. yes. The, the good thing about Luis Burillo, he works with the minerals very uh, meticulously, you know, mm -hmm. very good work. Uh, he's able to bring out the best of the, of the specimen out for, for, for it to show very nice. Okay, yes. and that's a fine, Pan fine appetite on there as well. Yes. And Panasquera more and more has become uh, slowly the production of minerals. So it's harder to find very nice material, okay. you know, so this piece is just a, a very pa special Panasquera piece. Panasquera is actually a complex of multiple, multiple mines, mines, yes? Yes, yes, and, yes. yes. Uh, in, in Portugal, it's very famous. It's very famous worldwide. Yes. Uh, Alain Marteau uh, actually did his PhD on the, the Minas de Panasquera. And um, I've always admired uh, the pieces that come out of there. Yes. Some of the purple appetites oh, are yeah. absolutely fantastic. Yes. yes. Good. Yes, yes. Thank you. That's okay. a wonderful piece. Okay, so last, we have a very special fluorite as well from different part of the world. It's green fluoride from Peru. Peru. Yes, with a combination of the pyrite. Okay, locality has just been released. Uh, people were giving out some mistaken information about locality. That's not so, uncommon, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So now, so, as you can see. Oh, this is. Yes, this is different label. Cerro de Pasco. That's, oh, okay. Yes. That's the right locality for this uh, very special green fluorite. This guy looks like the space shuttle. It looks like a space shuttle. Yes, indeed. That's, that's a wonderful piece. Yes, it's the luster, the depth of the see, color. Nice pyrite inclusions. So, yeah. And very sharp crystals, too. Yes, it's, it's, uh, people have been going crazy since Tucson. Tucson was the first show that these were shown. Okay. We were able to get a, a, a second lot. Uh, it's difficult as well to get them in good condition. Uh, but we were able to get a nice uh, set of pieces. And yeah, they have been they have been selling very well. So, and the locality is very high in the end. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. It's hard to work with. Wonderful. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, Jose, thank you so much. Thank uh, you. We really Shall appreciate you showing us all these and what's hot in, to in not Tucson, in San Marino. <laughs> we have the pleasure of being with uh, Alessandro and Federico Pezzotta at MCP Minerals today. And they're going to show us some of their minerals that uh, they have brought to the public. Um, and so, Federico, <laughs> hey, piacere. Thank you. Alessandro, ciao. ciao, thank ciao. You. Nice to see you. So please uh, show us your treasures. Okay, thank you for this opportunity. So uh, in our last uh, mission to Madagascar, after COVID time, two and a mm -hmm. half years, uh, which uh, were not going to the place, we did not find so much, but uh, a few cute things. We visited nine localities, and uh, I just want to give a, a couple of small examples okay. of uh, not particularly rare, difficult stuff, but uh, interesting. I was fascinated by this uh, piece of quartz, a specimen of quartz, in which uh, you have uh, clear crystals on a matrix of other crystals, but the piece was broken off in the pocket and there was a recrystallization of uh, amethyst crystal, which did not grow as chapters as typically is on the top of the clear crystals, but formed like some kind of fluids on the broken side of the specimen, creating this uh, very cute, perfect uh, and nice uh, floater. So it looks like a scepter, but it's not really yeah, a scepter. Exactly, exactly. The formation 
is uh, similar to a chapter. It looks like a chapter, but it is not a chapter. And uh, it is uh, a very unusual composition. Actually, if you inspect carefully, a chapter is here, another is there. Mm. So the formation is, a is the one of the chapters. But okay. the combination of the crystals, in my opinion, is uh, very quite unique and nice. So and then there is uh, another cute object, which is uh, this uh, small but nice sculpture. This is a topaz from uh, Manakana, in which uh, there was uh, a deep etching. This happened at the latest stage uh, of uh, the development of the pegmatite vein in which uh, the crystal uh, formed. And it is uh, very interesting to see how the etched leached out uh, mostly the transparent part, uh, the colorless part of the topaz, leaving uh, the tip of the crystal, which is characterized by a nice blue natural color, which is quite rare with this intensity and gemness in uh, topaz, exactly at the top of the piece. So this also, in my opinion, is a cute object. At the end, I want to show something which is uh, from my origin, from the Bergamo area. We are okay. always proud to show stones which are coming uh, from half an hour for, uh, from the house in which we live. <laughs> is this from Zogno, maybe? Zogno, yes, yeah. uh, indeed. Uh, it is very rare to have uh, nice stuff from this old mine, but uh, at the end we were able to, to get uh, this uh, interesting piece with the typical quartz matrix, nice, uh, quite sharp, transparent, uh, purplish, uh, purple actually, fluoride crystals. And uh, on the back, like a snow on the roof, the piece was found like this in the pocket, calcite. So removing uh, the piece from the pocket, turning on the back side, we saw these nice crystals. This is uh, something uh, found a couple of years ago in the mine. Like uh, doing the very first uh, checking uh, for uh, the occurrence of uh, some uh, new specimens in the mine, which is abandoned since uh, now 30 years. Okay. And uh, we are trying to renew with and, a lot of effort. And you were able to do this operation during COVID because I know in Italy it was very serious at the beginning. Yes, uh, uh, thanks to my brother, which is uh, somewhere hide there. <laughs> uh, we did uh, quite a lot of work uh, during the COVID time. Actually, the place is just a one hour drive mm -hmm. from Milan. From Milan. And uh, so we had the opportunity of uh, concentrating our attention there. And uh, COVID time actually did not give us a uh, other option to uh, travel. But uh, okay, we concentrate some work in this mine and we hope in the future to have uh, more material from there. Yes. It is like a hobby. I remember before, um, three years ago when we were here, we filmed some pieces from yes. Zonio already. I was very impressed with what came from there and very happy to see that you're continuing to work there. Yeah. Look forward to seeing some more. In yeah, the future, I hope, then. I hope uh, maybe to present a pocket in the future. That would Who be knows? wonderful. <laughs> that would be wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I would like uh, Alessandro okay. will now take uh, my place, illustrating a few other specimens in okay. this showcase. We go ahead with these beautiful ads, right? Classic locality from Twisi, Morocco. These are beautiful specimens, in my opinion, not only for the color, because the color is really amazing. I hope from the video you can, you can see it. But what I like is this special form as a fan with these big lustrous faces on in the front. What I realize is this one, usually I always seen this azurite from this side on display mm -hmm. and with the malachite on the surface. But in this case, the display, it's perfectly um, perfect and balanced. And these lustrous faces make it so special. And it looks like a chisel termination. Yes. It's really spectacular yes. for Twisted, yes. The combination with this dolomite, very lustrous, I think make a perfect contrast. And what is uh, something uh, make me very happy, it didn't need any trimming, was 
totally natural, found like this. So for us, it was uh, incredible to, to have a chance to That's to a great this. discovery, yeah. yes. Yeah. Really, really lovely. And we go ahead with something much, much more Italian. So this incredible combination is a huge gypsum on sulfur from the Cozzo Dizzi mine. We are Sicilia. in Sicily. Yes. We love, we love Sicilian minerals. And uh, we had chance to find this piece in, um, in a collection in Germany. This is a old specimen, I think will arrive from the 50s, 60s. Oh, yeah. really old, yeah. And what, uh, what mm, I think it's more exceptional is the condition, because uh, the quality of the gypsum uh, is uh, the top one for the locality. It's completely transparent. Yeah. Yeah. Super transparent, super lustrous. This means uh, the collector and the miners didn't uh, wash it or didn't uh, make any treatment by themselves destroying the luster. Very, very often we have, uh, we have seen some gypsum, amazing, but destroyed by the, the bad uh, managing of them. In this case, I think we were very, very lucky. What makes this piece super special is this combination, because we know there are beautiful gypsum from Sicily, amazing sulfur, probably the best in the world, but the combination of them in a specimen like this is Pretty rare. Not so, very common at no, all. Not very common. Yeah. Yeah. We like also this display with this, like a uh, like boat. So mm. Looks like the sail on a sailboat. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. It's fantastic. Yeah. All the white is calcite, small crystals of calcite, some stalactite, just to show 360 this piece. Yeah, the structure, the geometry, arrangement yeah. of the three species is... Pretty much ideal, yes. Yeah. Okay. So no tourmaline this time, you see? No tourmaline. Yeah? We are, well, we are, we are I, trying to do something different from, uh, I, from as usual, right? But, but I know you still have plenty of <laughs> Yes, we are, we are. Not this, so. not this time. We have something really, really, really different from a tourmaline. Extremely simple, but uh, not so simple. As you can see, this is a new find. We had chance to work in the last year. Is a quartz from India with a beautiful inclusion inside. Mm. This uh, inclusion, red inclusion, purplish inclusion is hematite. hematite yeah. Yes. What makes this piece a fascinating as is the luster, the quality, the clarity of the, the, the quartz, and, the and how visible is the phantom. This beautiful color, it's done by thin crystals of hematite. Because when hematite is crystallized in a very thin crystal, you can see the color become transparent and you can see the color reddish. So it enhances. This kind of inclusion are different from some samples because, as you can see, here are, you have some small spots. In some others, the purple is more strong, super sparkly, so you can check with the microscope all the small crystals inside. In this case, you have also the matrix, make mm -hmm. a wavy matrix, beautiful. When you first showed me this, I was thinking South, uh, South Africa, maybe <laughs> no, the it's, uh, Brandenburg it's area. South this India. South India instead. These are small specimens, but we have chance also to find Get some, some larger yes. ones. Yeah. Some large one. Also here, beautiful inclusion. The first generation with the hematite, it's uh, very visible and uh, the clear part makes some strange games with some other inclusions, like this. But that's red. also hematite. It's uh, an um, uh, oxidite, also uh, always of uh, iron. Uh, not sure it's hematite, but uh, yeah, so also can, with iron. Okay, yeah. so some other oxide. Yes. Uh, that makes a really wonderful veil rising <laughs> yeah. up from uh, the, uh, the phantom. I just want to steal you last... 30 seconds to show you how they come out from the mine. So when we receive this, just after some fr um, fast wash yes. from the mines, they are very brownish. So, and the brown is deep, deep, deep inside the contacts everywhere. And after our cleaning start to become better, but you can see still some orange between the crystals. And with a very deep cleaning in our lab, 
we are able to make them totally, totally clear without any kind of trace of. So getting the iron there. oxides off of these crystals it, it is helps a lot it. of yeah. work. Yeah. Make it uh, perfectly it, it for really the display in the showcase nice. for all the collection. Yeah. That's great. So all I hope right. you enjoyed. Yes, well, yeah. Alessandro, thank you. Always a great pleasure. Federico, <laughs> molto grazie. Yeah. So we're very happy. See you to around. To Thanks, Brian. Film these guys. Thank you very much. We are here with uh, Jean-Michel Laverrière of Laverrière Minerals, who has some fantastic things to show us. And uh, it's really a pleasure to see you again. So Jean-Michel, please nice show us again. your new files uh, here. I got some, some specimen. One especially uh, retired from Grave Mountain, Georgia. Very good specimen, old, found maybe 30, 35 years ago and bought by my father. So, so this was your father's piece originally? Yeah, yeah. Yes. But very nice specimen. In unusual with uh, the trim inside. Yeah, it's a large yeah, trim. And a little bit reddish on the edges. Black minerals, uh, red mineral, black red mineral, but well, with the same very with, interesting. With some very of the silver minerals, they're red, but then they yeah. turn black. But this is just so intense yes. and big that it appears much darker than the red. Yeah, yeah. I like it. This is a, <laughs> it's a wonderful piece. No, a small one. A small one. Uh, Bolangeite and Cumangeite from Chile. Boleo. Yeah. It's so, small, but unusual, very rare. And uh, I like it too. There, there is not a lot on the market actually. And, yeah. Well, the, the form is really good yes. on this particular one. Yes. So it's the well the crystallized. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. And a good, very old specimen also from Michigan, Houston, Newton, and uh, calcite and native copper, but natural, no, no working. No transformation. The, 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 patina, like the patina is the yeah. original natural. Very good, patina. very old also. I like the old specimen because I'm old too. So this came <laughs> from an old collection that yes, you of acquired then? Sold by my father too. Another one sold yeah. by your father before? He was a good dealer. <laughs> Apparently. That's very I am nice. a good buyer now. <laughs> Excellent. That's very good. Thank you very much. All right. Well, Jean-Michel, thank you so much for sharing your minerals with yeah. us. And uh, we're always happy to see what you have. Uh, it's a pleasure. I can never stop by without picking something up for my own collection. Thank you. Because Jean-Michel always provides. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, Sammy, hey. it's wonderful to see you again in Sainte-Marie. We've really missed the last few years, yes. so it's, it's good me. to see you here. Likewise. Yeah, it's so... Good to be here. I, you know, I know you always have nice things, so would you like to share some, some special things with yeah. us this time? Yeah. This, year, this year we have a, a new find of of mesolite from India. A lot of people uh, thought it to be Thomsonite first, but actually okay. it turned out to be uh, nice spheres of mesolite. Yeah, because uh, you would have thought with that, that color and... Yes. So this was a new find that uh, that was in fact found when everybody was in Tucson. So right after Tucson, when we got back home, uh, we managed to get some nice pieces uh, so that's, from this find. So that's really new, then nobody's ever seen this yet. Uh, this show is probably the first show that it has uh, it has come to this material. And uh, the fun thing is that it was found while they were making a highway in this... Not a well. Not a well this time. So central India, they were making a highway, they're making a large highway project, and that's where they found uh, a, a nice big cavity of these... Wow, it is, it's quite nice. Yes, yes. I like the arrangement, you know, on the matrix. And, yes. And uh, what, what are the um, the other things? Oh, uh, well, that? it's just, it's uh, based on basalt. So, but it's not olivine. I mean, it's green. No, it's, it's not, yes. It's got a... Uh, yeah, my eyes uh, are getting worse, so. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, they're very appealing. It's, uh, it's nice to see small things that are so well-formed and yes. so brilliant, too. This and... I like the contrast of the, the surface and the core. Yeah. <laughs> so, good, good. And uh, 
And to show I have a, a, a very nice jemmy. That cow said, that's the first thing that caught my eye when I walked into your booth. That's just spectacular. Yes. And where's uh, this from? Uh, this was from a water well. It was a, a small pocket in a water well and uh, this was the biggest piece it produced. Mm -hmm. And I mean this piece. That's is this absolutely nice. yeah. jemmy it's, from it's end to end. Yes. And it's a twin crystal as well. So that makes it pretty amazing. I had a lot of people walk into the booth and saying, oh, now you have citrine. I said, no, it's calcite. <laughs> that would be quite the citrine. No, that's, that's yeah, it's hard to conf confuse it with citrine, but uh, that is really very nice. I mean, I can see your hand under it so well. It's like you could read through it. And, um, so there were... Um, how many pieces maybe in the pocket? Uh, there were about eight to ten pieces, but this was the largest one. That was one. the best That one, was yeah. the largest one that came out of there. Okay. And uh, like every year, we have some very nice Himalayan quartz Himalayan as well. Himalayan quartz, yeah. And you see the clarity on this one. Mm -hmm. well. Is this from, um, what's it? Ganesh Himal? No, Gan no, Ganesh Himal is in Nepal. Oh, that's right. It is this, in Nepal. This is from Himachal Pradesh, okay. which is uh, a northern state in India. Okay. And uh, the district is called Kulu, K-U-L-L-U, K -K -U -L -L -U, Kulu district. And uh, lately they've been producing uh, some real spectacular alpine uh, habit uh, quartz. There. I know. You would almost expect this to be a French or an Austrian <laughs> Quartz. So. Yes. Yeah, that's very nice as well. So how high up? This is at fourteen thousand feet. Fourteen thousand feet. Okay. Yeah. So not so so high, but not so high, but uh, I'm still in pretty, pretty high for. Oh yeah, of course. Uh, Especially to work up there, the uh, the elevation works on you. And yes. When we were working two months ago, it was only seven thousand feet, and. Yes. The first few days were kind of rough. Yeah, they are. But yeah. you get used to and it. And here, this is a this is a. I mean, to get to the pocket where I've been, it's a two to three day hike uh, up in the mountains to get to the, these pockets. So they're not easily accessible. Yeah. Uh, that's why we don't have a, a whole bunch of this material coming in. There's material up there, but you yeah. can't really yes. get it in or out mostly. Yes. Yeah. That's and you were up there with a team of uh, other there, people? The, the locals are there. The locals are always working because they they have the first right to work there. But right. since they're locals and uh, they're the ones who are excavating most of the minerals. So Great. we were out there visiting them. Yeah, that's <laughs> wonderful. I'm sure they appreciate your visits. <laughs> and you appreciate the minerals that they oh, collect. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. 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 Very good. Yeah. All right. Up here, uh, I'd like to show you another nice specimen that I uh, I found and this was uh, this was one of the pieces that uh, I found in the in the past years of of this mesolite those three, yeah three balls big mesolite yeah. sitting on matrix so this was from another highway expansion project oh, all very, right. very close to my my place in Pune okay and it has an interesting matrix there too. It's, it's kind of nice when you, you know, same thing. We come from Hawaii, where everything is almost the same color. Yeah. <laughs> so having some variety in the matrix really adds to the, the pieces. Yep. That's pretty <laughs> that, nice that, too. That, that, is that a, from the same that's location? That's from the same location. Uh, yeah. It's a giant cathedral quartz, quartz yeah. there, and. Uh, I, I, I tried my hand at making some custom mounts for them mm -hmm. and I, I think they worked out pretty yeah, well. Yeah, <laughs> it worked out quite well. <laughs> we but you the... can't carry too many of these out mm, on your backpack. No, no, no. no. <laughs> so, very good. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. It's it great to see you, Sammy. Thank you. And we look forward to seeing more wonderful minerals yes, from you. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Uh, we are here with uh, Michel Amboise. Uh, who's a uh, French dealer, prospector, and also works in the United States a lot. Michel, ça fait plaisir de te revoir. Yeah, me too. I'm glad to and, see you uh, again after all of those years. You know. Yeah, and I think you have something to show us from your, oh, your own digging. 
Yeah, yeah, my own digging, and it was, uh, I was waiting for that for almost like nearly, yeah, three years now, actually. I discovered uh, March uh, 20, no, March 19, sorry. March 19, okay. Bring it, uh, because it was much bigger, and I get it, just get it back. The specimen was really much bigger, so I sent it uh, to Emanuele in Milan, and uh, he did a really great job, you know. So this is a, uh, this a piece is, from Valzerg. This yeah. is a piece from Valzerg, yes, exactly. Yeah. Which Michel has been working for a number of years yeah. with some friends. Yeah, like five years working into the vein of the what we call the yellow vein, the filon jaune of Valzerg. This is an interesting one because it has a really blue, uh, more blue color. Still the phantoms. And, and the, in, the inside is yellow, of course. The inside is yellow. Show the back so people can see where the yellow comes from. Yeah. This pocket was not very shiny, but you must understand that most of the pocket, like 90% of the pocket, are not really shiny in Valzerg. It's very rare. Right. And a lot of are frosted, unfortunately. So this specimen, I will. I mean, this, this is very nice. I will uh, put a nice place in my uh, collection. In your collection, I remember going there with you and seeing all the little pieces around, and most of them were not shiny. Yeah, so. it has a, a small defect here. I mean, uh, here, but it's. Uh, That's a very nice. The architecture piece. is nice. Yeah. And Emmanuel did a, grew, a really great job on these specimens, you know. Yeah. yeah, the preparation labs really know what they're doing. They really make the specimens so much better. Yeah, sometimes, you know, this was like 15 meter deep, so about 45 uh, feet deep. So, and the vein was going really, uh, really narrow. So it was very difficult to take it, uh, take it out, you know. Voilà. So, yeah. you, th I know you, and I know very well you must have something else. Oh, some, some keys are very helpful for, sure, for carry things, but uh, yeah, I think I have a, s a little bit bigger than this. Yeah, I think I can. It's helpful for the table. Yeah, let me. So, uh, so uh, bubble wrap uh, is very yeah. nice. Yeah, when Emmanuel showed me the case, I was like, I, it was not my case. It's uh, a little bit bigger, but he protected it a lot. Well, I think it's a little bit bigger, Michel. Uh, it's a little bit I bigger. I would agree yeah. with you. I, Okay. And uh, it's you know a what? good thing you're strong because how did you get this out of the mine? It's ve the, it's very narrow the hall. I remember. Oh, we did a it. really great job to uh, enlarge the vein. Uh, you, you know, it takes a lot of 15 meter with uh, buckets. It takes about probably 300 buckets to to lift up to put in a dump before you get to the uh, to the possible pieces. You know, to to catch it and uh, get it in your hands. Then uh, I mean, th this we, is we we put a rope all around, wrap with blanket. We put a rope all around, so I hold it. I climb the stair, and my friend is it's pulling, pulling from, up yeah. on it. Yeah, but I, I mean, can lift it and put it. Pas de photo, s'il vous plaît. I've um, I've. Ça ne regarde personne. I've seen. Uh, a lot of the things that you've brought out of there, but this is yeah, I try to, This is pretty amazing. Yeah, I've never I try, seen anything I try like to, this. I, I, I mean, I, yeah, I have some, I have a lot of things, uh, but I, I want a good preparation. You know, I don't want to have. Uh, yeah, well, I can lift it if you want. You really can. You can carry this thing. Yeah, but the only things you have to do is to put back the. So let's do like this here. You will have to slide back the the lid. It's, the yeah. lid. Yeah. <sighs> what? Yeah, maybe. Don't hurt your back, man. Yeah, okay, go, 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 go. Well, 
I think uh, this is definitely part of what's hot. <laughs> this is very hot, so. And very heavy, too. And very heavy. <laughs> Michel, your face is turning all red. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what's heavy in Saint Marie? What's heavy in Saint Marie? That's the new title. Come for to this. see me, I will show you what's heavy. <laughs> so, great times. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank okay, you. Good. Always good to see you, Greg. Ready for some challenge? Yeah, sure. Look at this. Wow, nice piece. Yeah. It's a lovely aquamarine from Madagascar. Mm -hmm. We found it in a collection. Interesting, and those are two yeah. colors. I immediately thought about you because I think it's a special color from Madagascar. Yeah. This shape is not helping me to, to sell as a specimen. Mm -hmm. And I think could be could be something interesting to challenge you to, to see some animals inside or something. Yeah, the shape, it's tricky, but I think... Uh, I think it's not tricky. Yeah. I think first we need to clean it and see what's left. And then we decide what we can carve out. Yeah, I think I these think kind of things are just under the surface. Few it meters, is, it's right? only maybe five minutes going in, you see yeah. it. If it's out, it's... I think you can work with. Another way to clean, not like MCP lab. Your cleaning this time would be the, the useful one, absolutely. But anyhow, we need to use the different colors. Mm -hmm. That is special, it's this piece. Yeah. And we need to work it out anyhow. You know, this is special because of the locality. Okay. And this one was found in the 99-2000, so as wow. 22 years. was sold by Federico, and uh, we had a chance to buy the collection after 22 years. So this means for us much more special because we left once in mm -hmm. one way, we it took it back, back and yeah. now we, we want it back in an, a different way. Yeah. With your uh, genius. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, I think also from the top, this last termination, lustrous termination, can, you can see it's jammy. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I hope under this, it's more jammy. Yeah. yeah, I think we can do anything else. Yeah. Huh? I'm curious now. Yeah, we have to, to see. But thank you, huh? thank you yeah. to spend some time to understand what sure. we can do. For me, it's always good to meet people like you. Oh, you come you. to the stones. Yeah. I have not the access. Oh. I cannot travel to the mines. I have okay. to sit down and work. So <laughs> okay. People so like it's you, team, always teamwork. Like teamwork. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. It's fine. We love that. We love yeah. that. For us, it's a no-no. Honestly. It's For me too. Crazy. So cool. Let's let's see. Yeah. Let's see. Thank you very much. All right. We are with. Wally Wolfgang Wendell of Wendell Minerals. And uh, you have some nice minerals to show us. Um, I'm really looking forward to this because I've been walking around and seeing your things for the last few days. So please show us your treasures. Okay, I suggest that we are starting with um, a fantastic Franklin Rhodonite. Look at this one. Look at the color, look at the gemminess. And it's a really Perfectly good size. Perfectly terminated, yes. Exactly balanced, fantastic. This, this is, has got to you be. Can hold it. This has got to be if an, you touch it, you an older it. piece. Oh, so I just bought it. Okay, okay. in my pocket. Okay. Thank you, Wally. Wow. Do you do you know how old, when this was first collected? It is a good question. It should be pretty old. It's from. Dr. David H. Garske, mineralogic, mineralogist, Rapid City. So a collector from South Dakota went all the way to New Jersey to collect in Franklin. Um, Franklin and Sterling Hill are the capitals of fluorescent minerals yes. for the world, basically. I agree, yeah. And um, this is absolutely the best that I've seen from there. Um, I definitely I haven't you. seen all of them, I'm sure, but um, I'm really impressed by this piece. Fully Especially terminated, the colors. and the color is just Great. so vivid. And the white matrix with additional smaller rhodonites on it really adds to the yeah. the sheer beauty of this piece. So we now have. we're in the world of pegmatites, which is very close to my heart. This aqua with two different terminations, fantastic color, 
no repairs accompanied by minor shard and, and, and quartz quark. crystals. Yes, everything is perfect terminated. Multiple terminations here as well. Very sharp edged, absolutely gemmy with a good color. It's a great thing. Yeah, the aesthetics are they're superb, and there's even uh, over here a third yes. one. So yes, a little cousin. All right, I see an amazing little morganite down there. Yes, here go ahead with a pop rock, with pop rock morganite. So now Afghanistan. Yes, Afghanistan specimen. Look, accompanied with this beautiful doubly terminated um, crystal of tourmaline. All on the Clevelandite. Yes. Matrix, albite and Clevelandite, actually. Yes, and no, not any damage on the specimen. Pristine all around. Yeah, that is truly a beautiful piece. Yes. And look at the multiple terminations here. And, and fairly complex, too. It's, yeah. It's really nice. Yes. With great contrast, good balance. Yeah, I spotted that early on and said that's a really amazing piece. Yeah, there's even a little bit of mica on the backside, too. Yes. So, but this doesn't got... bother the no, not overall at all. aesthetics. No, yeah. no, we go ahead with a fine cluster, okay, of absolutely jammy. Smoky quartz from the most famous Alp, Swiss Alpine. The Rufibach cleft, yes. That's Locality, just. Locality, it's a Rufibach cleft. And there's not a flaw anywhere no, in this. No, absolutely jammy. From top to bottom. Yeah. Look at the jamminess and the fine serration. And the intensity of the color, you know? Yes. It's yes. just really amazing. Look here, you see my fingers. Yeah, I don't think they find very many of these, although it's a very prolific cleft. Yes. And if you know the dramatics and the destiny of this pocket, so many people passed away. Yeah, yeah. have died. I think we go ahead with another smoky quartz, but not with a Swiss or Austrian one. We go ahead. With the New Mexico one, here we have a super specimen of Smoky Bear Wilderness. As so, you, you know, with the Nature Trust today. Right. So th this is amazing because when I first walked by earlier, I had seen this and I said, oh, okay, a nice, you know, one more Swiss specimen maybe. Yes, you can hold and it, that, no problem. You know, now that I see that this is a New Mexican piece, I'm very much impressed more impressed of course because it's it's a beautiful piece but that locality um i mean if it's part of the nature trust now you know i don't yeah. think we're going to be getting pieces like this yeah it's a very old and, one um, of course yes you know, old collections yes new mexico actually has a lot of wonderful minerals i agree um, desert southwest of the united states is a great place to be a collector we go ahead with another quartz, but in this case, not a, not a smoky, it's a citron on Danberite from Charcas. You see here the Danberite oh, crystals? Danberite, yeah. So that's good, we went from New Mexico to Old Mexico. Yes, I agree. Oh, yeah, you know, right. it's, not, it's not very delicate. Until I drop it. Yeah. And it's from the, for that um, combination, well-known king and queen mine of Charcas. Yeah, very old but stuff, the, very the, old stuff. The citrine is really yellow. Yes. Very, very much, you And know, you see, this is thing. not this uh, burned or radiated stuff. Yes, right. it's natural. Yeah, it's a, it's a problem. They do that irradiate, otherwise, um, Amethyst and it turns into citrine, but yes. not really citrine. Yes. This is 
And the Dambrai crystals are large, of course, but that locality has a lot of, of Danbarite. Yes, but I think the combination is rare. The combination rare. is quite rare. I've yeah. not seen one before, so. Yeah. Yeah, very nice, Wally. Okay. Here we have an old time quartz from Russia. So is this, uh, oh, Dalnegorsk, yeah. Old Dalnegorsk one, yes. With slightly praise color, look at this radiated the, um, luster. This thing, the aesthetics, the, uh, yeah. the radiating crystals, it's like you have a sun yes. on, a, on a scenery, on a mountain scenery. Yeah. And um, I've seen a lot of Dalnegor species, but never have I seen anything like this one. I agree. Yeah, it's a very good one. I mean, I, I hesitate to show the back because the front is just so fantastic. Yes, but you see also the limonite stalactites in, in the, at the back side and the front. This gives, it gives a little bit more contrast and dramatics. Right. This is another location that has produced just fantastic specimens, different yes. types of things. The clear, the clear fluorites from here are legendary. Yeah. Yeah. But this, this praise quartz is... Yeah. And unfortunately at the time, it's impossible to get stuff from there. I can only imagine. Yeah. And then last but not least, I will show you a few Tumeb specimens. All right. Sumeb is another one of these mythic and prolific localities. Here we have a fantastic wolfenite look at the color. Oh my. Very unusually good color. Mm -hmm. can can canary, well, canary, canary yellow. yellow. Yeah. Very good one. Yes, we had um, the great opportunity to purchase a collection of a former miner foreman of Tumep. He emigrated back to Germany in the, in the end of the 70s. And this specimen was part of his collection. Wow. It's a good one. Very good one for you to get, absolutely. And here, the blue brother. Look at this. What an azurite! Oh my God! Doubly terminated, and look at the at the um, at the color in coloration the, for inside. Oh yeah, the you see this the internal reflections of this electric blue. This is an absolutely perfect crystal. Yeah, it is. It's completely. I mean, it, wow little bit of matrix and little brother under it but this particular piece yeah i have never seen anything like this one yeah, it's very old pocket yes. well known pocket but i forgot the name of the pocket it was the doubly terminated azurite pocket no it's named <laughs> it's named after um after an old Namibian dealer, but it's obviously not Sid Peters, but somebody like that, someone like that. It's like there's a zone in the middle where it's particularly electric blue and yeah. a darker blue rim, on yes. the outside on the rim. But uh, and then when you look at it from the side, you can you get that again. Yeah, yeah. It's a real cool one. A yeah. little bit of malachite as well. Wow, thank you for sharing this one. That's just superb piece. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so, Wally, thank Thanks. you so much for sharing your wonderful minerals with you. You know, your Wolfgang Wendell, wonderful minerals. Thank is you. What you should it was a pleasure right. as well for me. Thank as you always. very much. Thank you for coming. We're happy to see you all the time. So Thank you. All and right. greetings to all friends in the world of minerals. Okay, we're here with uh, Grégoire de Bonina, Bodina and Sylvain Desfarges, Hello. who have made a fantastic discovery um, in the Bourdoisan area, and they're going to uh, show us these pieces. <laughs> Alors, bonjour, Grégoire, bonjour. ça fait plaisir Hello. de te revoir. Merci. Sylvain, Hello. plaisir de te revoir Merci. aussi. Merci. And, uh, 
you can say yes. some some things. Yes, we have uh, we found this uh, dec this discovery there three years ago. Okay, uh, it's uh, the place is a Lagarette mine. It's a old mine near Bourgoison, uh, about uh, two kilometers. Uh, the discovery was quite very bright, very transparent, with associated with kelp copyrights. Uh, kelp copyrights are oxidated in brown and uh, with malachite, and uh, we have found we think and. Many people, many, many people, people think they are the best association calcopyrite in quartz never found at Lagarette mine. Yeah, these are really huge calcopyrites. Yes, it's a huge yes. calcopyrite. Yes. So it's pretty amazing. But from what I understand, some of the pieces have also bright calcopyrite. Not all is uh, oxidized. So I, it's, uh, no. Uh, the calcopyrite are often oxidized, and maybe sometimes we um, we have uh, iridescence. Oh, it's Sounds. the iridescence yeah, that, that yeah. shines out. Okay, very good. And the, I this is formally the the Min Agiro yes, part. Min, yes, Min Agiro is a little area just uh, near Lagarette's mine. You know, it's a it's a little ore just okay. just just uh, near. It's the same area. Okay. <coughs> Okay. Yeah. So, how how many pieces did you find that are of good quality there? And I don't know. <laughs> don't know. So it was a major find. Yes, then. it's yes. a major. Oh, That's yes, really yes, good. Yes. Major, but yes. Yes. The pocket uh, was ten meters longer, but uh, very um, very narrow. Very yeah. narrow, and uh, one meters up. High. So for two tall boys like you, very difficult to work. Yes, it's difficult to work and long to work. Yes. Uh, we are working on the fract, in the fracture. Mm -hmm. uh, five, five months? Six. During, five, during five months? During five, six months. Yes, just for, for extract very, uh, for extract all the specimen. And we need a hydraulic system to to break the, the, the fracture rock the rock and, yes uh, and uh, extract yeah, and, and, and extract the, the, the pieces yeah covered by mud by clay by clay with clay, clay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so then a big cleaning process yes, after of course yes yes so yeah most people they see specimens and they think that they came out just the way you see them and they don't understand that many times there is so much work to do after yes. you get the piece because Super nature normal. always fills yeah. yes. the cavities with other materials. Yes, yes. exactly, yes. exactly. It's right. Very good. Yeah. Yes. All right. Well, um, I know this is the 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 major the the main piece you found. This was you, but you have others that are. Uh, of, of smaller size, but yes, really good yes. quality as yes, well. Uh, yes, so. we'll have a lot of yeah. specimen with very good quality yeah, and uh, calcopyrite associated with quartz. Yes, that's we very are. good. <laughs> well, we really uh, appreciate yeah. um, seeing uh, what you have provided. I know both of you are famous for as cristallier and uh, <laughs> have you. always brought nice things to the market for us to enjoy as collectors. <laughs> Okay. So we want to congratulate yes. you. Felicitations. Yes. We we'll see you okay. with our next with our next discovery. <laughs> discovery. Merci, Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Yes. Hein? Okay. 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 It's a pleasure to see you guys. Okay, we are here this morning with Denis Boel, who is a famous French collector and is also the curator of the Chamonix Museum, which has undergone some incredible renovations over the past couple of years. So. Uh, Denis, mm -hmm. enchanté de te revoir. So nice to meet you, the, Eric. Uh, you can tell us uh, a little bit about uh, yes. the new uh, yes. part of the museum. So the Chamonix Museum uh, was opened uh, in 2005 and uh, was a combination of two collections. Uh, the collection of uh, the Club de Mineralogie and the, another collection from the City Hall. Uh, at this time, there was um, 500 specimen uh, in exhibition, and uh, uh, five years ago, we received two important collections: uh, one 
mainly composed of alpine minerals and another big collection from worldwide specimen. And the city hall decided to expand the museum and I have been working for, for this, uh, for this uh, business uh, for two years. Uh, the current museum now is composed of uh, 80 uh, showcases. Uh, about uh, the half uh, from uh, worldwide specimen. And the, the most interesting is uh, the first space uh, with 700 uh, alpine minerals from classic French localities, Mont Blanc, uh, Loisan, uh, Savoie, but also a mineral from Austria, Switzerland, uh, Italy. Maybe actually uh, this is the most important museum in France uh, with uh, around 2,000 specimens in exhibition and uh, we are happy to and proud to to, uh, to, comment, comment, to uh, present it. To, to present to present a, a complete uh, complete uh, uh, series a series a complete series of minerals <laughs> c'est bien c'est bien <laughs> uh, qu'est-ce qu'elle fait Mais, alors, euh, alors the, the museum before uh, was in a location very central in in town yeah. uh, almost underground and it was relatively small yeah did they just expand that location or has the museum moved no no the the, the museum uh, stay in the in the former place and uh, uh, à côté uh, next to it uh, à côté de um, the former museum there was another exhibition for alpinism and now alpinism has gone away and we, we, we got the, the place to put the new museum. So the, uh, the, the alpinism now is represented by the big wall, maybe 50 meters from the museum where there's a, a painting of the yeah. mountain climbers. Yes. But, but uh, the, the alpinism is in the... Um, uh, Musée de... Alpes, how do you call it? Musée des Alpes? No, no. no. how do you call it? Pas Bourgoisan, non? Uh, uh, Alpin. The, the Alpinist will be in a Musée Alpin, but this Musée Alpin is now uh, 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 closed for four years for, for a big renovation. So, this is actually pretty amazing because both of the important aspects, the mountain climbing as well as the absolutely wonderful minerals that come from these high mountains yeah. are going to be uh, enhanced and made you know new and yeah. and more available is is uh, your museum open to the public yet yeah absolutely the new museum is open uh, since uh, last uh, christmas and uh, i have i have to work for uh, the um, uh, come on uh, I have to work for pedagogy, pedagogy with with four screens, with uh, uh, come on, uh, educational videos and, or yeah. interactive, interactive, interactive interactive screens for pedagogy. But uh, this work will be finished at the end of uh, 22. Very good. So did uh, the COVID. Uh, period yeah. cause you some problems of well, course uh, uh, the big problem is the price <laughs> who have everything went up in price yeah so who has uh, sponsored financially the renovations of this museum there are there are two 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 uh, more important uh, sources right, sources mm -hmm. the first is the city hall and uh, one of the two uh, donators mm -hmm. Uh, give his collection and also one million euros. So, so, wow! So we, we could make an important renovation. Well, that's we, 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 choose, we choose the best uh, showcase uh, who has been uh, made in Italy in a Gopion society, society. So that's really fantastic that you have a yeah. donor not only gives minerals but also lends support in order to expand the museum and, and bring, bring forth, uh, mettre en valeur, uh, yeah, yeah. all of this. Uh, and yeah. I, I visited the old museum and I was impressed. 
Yeah. Uh, I'm really looking forward to yeah. seeing the new museum now. Yeah, it's a very nice museum. And we, we are lucky because uh, the, the mayor of the city is uh, himself a, a collector and, and a digger in, in uh, Mont Blanc. So uh, it, it is easier with uh, uh, this man. It's, it's really good to have the people who are passionate yeah, yeah. about the collecting and, and especially in this case, a field collector who's in an, in an important position where yeah. he can really uh, bring his power to, yeah, yeah, to expand yeah. And, and, yeah. and build this place. So yeah. I but, think you've been very lucky in that respect. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good. Fantastic. So we're again, we're with Denis Boel, curator of the Chamonix Museum. It was already a place that you did not want to miss before the renovations. And now absolutely more, you must go to Chamonix to see this new wonder of the world. Thank you. Alain, <laughs> Okay, hello. Bonjour Alain. Alain, it's Bonjour, wonderful Eric. to see you again. Thank you very uh, much. For this What's Hot in Sainte Marie. Glad to be back. And uh, you have some fantastic pieces that you'd like to show us. So, um, uh, can you? I, uh, let's say I have some nice pieces. Uh, you decide if it's fantastic or not. That sounds <laughs> like a good idea. So, okay. So this is uh, the collection of uh, retired French mineral dealers, um, Jean-Pierre and Nicole Voile. And this is an old timer uh, Pedernera that they bought at the mine in 1990. And it's, uh, it was a good old time. It's only one small repair, no restoration, nothing. And as you can see, this is a very big specimen, very showy with some nice quartz, uh, rehill uh, everywhere, so this is a floater. And in addition, there is a big apatite crystals, a few clevelandite, a few, a few lepidolite. I think this is a quite cool, very big, very big specimen it, uh, of tourmaline. It's impressive. I, I like the, the way the terminations are. Yeah. Uh, you have this nice clear prism, and then at the end, uh, this dark and uh, the texture on the uh, top of the termination is really very interesting. These me. are very small uh, quartz. Yeah. So that's a, an overgrowth yeah, of yeah, quartz. Th that you can see also from place to place on the big uh, uh, quartz uh, crystals. Yeah and for, for such a big piece I wish we had a stronger light it has some pretty amazing uh, translucency to it. Yeah, with a uh, green and blue, uh, sometimes even some purple uh, color. The pitolite is, is very bright. There's only a little bit of it. And, but the, it's, uh, and the appetite is amazing. Yeah, the appetite is very large and well crystallized. It even has a small tourmaline on the top of it. Yeah. So quite the combination piece and uh, I imagine when they found this they must have lost their breath for a little bit <laughs> maybe because also of the weight <laughs> of trying to <laughs> inside carry it out. the pocket to I can try imagine. to carry it without uh, causing any damage any damage yeah. yeah well that's always the big problem when you have such spectacular pieces is to get them out of the pocket with with no damage is always challenging. So that's um, congratulations on, on acquiring such a piece. Let's say a cool box. Okay. Just arriving from the laboratory from the cleaning because it, it so was is, is str strongly covered by iron oxides like goethite. Okay. And, uh, also manganese of, of, uh, hydroxide like which are hard to get rid of yeah and is this a new find no it's an old find of, uh, in town in the french uh, uh, french fluoride. department in the fluoride district the fluoride yeah. district uh, of albigeois 
and this is from Le Francimont mine. Oh! Not very far away from Le Moulinal and Mont yeah. Open Pit. Le Francimont, I remember getting a piece from you a few years yeah, ago. A few from years this ago. Mine. Yes. And those were found by a, a local digger uh, in 1981. Oh, so that's quite a while ago. Oh my goodness gracious. Let's say that it is uh, blue. Blue is, is an understatement. These are just such a vivid blue. You don't really need a light to look through these. This large cube, it, yeah, I was going to say, we can put a light to it just to see. But uh, this is much, much brighter colors than, uh, oh, look at that. Much brighter colors than the uh, the ones I got from you, but I'm still very happy with the ones I got from you. <laughs> good news. <laughs> yeah. Well, you always have good material, so it's not a problem. I like that small one. Uh, the, the blue is a little bit more... Um, I don't know the word, uh, but... Uh, Say it in French. Un peu plus vif, un peu plus... Vif, a little more lively. Yeah, lively. Lively, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah that's a lovely miniature. It would be fantastic to add that to my collection. <laughs> and if you, if you have a... The light? Backlighting. Yeah. Those are also quite cool. Oh, yeah. That's really very spectacular and these were completely covered with iron and yeah, manganese oxide. I will, I will show you okay oh yeah that means these are floaters naturally d detached uh, in the in the geode in the pocket uh, yeah. and in the pocket and uh, fall down and uh, it was like a rock pile uh, and mm -hmm. if you don't, somebody who don't know the story and don't pay attention could uh, walk on them uh, without uh, notice. Without uh, noticing uh, such uh, good pieces, yeah. yeah. And so when they fall into the pile uh, from, from the, where they formed in the cavity, reheal, and then they get coated by infiltration yeah, of iron and manganese absolutely. oxides. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And... So this is the secret box that stays under and in the shelves is, and only for special people. Do this these is get the shot. super secret box. Okay, uh, I can't this is wait. This from Mont Rock Open Pit. Uh, okay, Fl Fl another fluorite mine, yeah, yeah. famous fluorite mine. Um, mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. I, I'm at a loss for words. I've seen a lot of Mohawk, but yeah, this one is... Uh, me too, but that, that that's one... That's pretty spectacular. <laughs> it's really... And Mohawk, is, is that still active nowadays? No, it closed uh, in 2005. Okay. Um, not because of the lack of reserve of uh, fluor spar uh, mm -hmm. ore, but uh, they have to to reach uh, a deep, very, too, too difficult to, to, to get to. And is it flooded also down there um, at the bottom? Yeah, flooded at the bottom and uh, uh, they implant uh, some trees uh, at the upper part uh, oh, okay. of the open pit. Well, this has a fantastic uh, phantom, phantom inside. Yeah. It's, and then the, maybe, the maybe, upper part of the crystal maybe, is just absolutely clear. I don't know if you can... No, it's a little bit difficult. Maybe this helps. But when I looked at it straight on edge, the upper part had several millimeters of really, really... Oh yeah, perfect. Maybe if you... Yeah, that is spectacular. And, and the Phantom is just very... Very net. It's just sharp. Square. 
<laughs> perfectly well. It should be, right? Yeah, it should be because this is cubic, as we will explain in the special exhibition uh, in South Mario in this year. Oh, that's right, that's yeah, right. This is about crystallography. So this is a good example. <laughs> Maybe you can... Can you see the phantoms? Um, especially right there on edge. It's just spectacular. Well, now I've changed my mind. I prefer this one to the one that I said I liked inside. Alain, congratulations. Uh, this you know? is something completely different. Right? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, when you are a fluorite lover like me and some of my customers, the problem is you like both. Right, yeah, Fossiman <laughs> and the Bloc, yeah, of yeah. course. Epic locations in France, or mythic locations in uh, France, which is actually very, very rich in fluorites. There are many fluorite deposits, particularly in the southern and central part of France, and uh, we always enjoy them. Every time I go to Alain's house, I get to enjoy uh, the, his spectacular collection. This is coming from a coal mine in, uh, near Grenoble in the Alps. This is Lamur d'Isère uh, coal basin. Lamur d'Isère, okay. Uh, and those mines intersect some veins, uh, siderite veins, with uh, some uh, uh, sulfides like uh, uh, sphalerite, bournonite, and tetrahedrite. Oh, I believe at the 2019 fair, one of the French gentlemen, Cristallier, had a, a wonderful exhibit of really large yeah. siderites, uh, yeah. very lustrous, that we had also and filmed. This is a siderite from, uh, from the family of a um, uh, dead miner from, uh, from Lamur d'Isère. I'm, I'm at a loss because it doesn't look like siderite to me. It's just. No, it's, it's uh, tetrahedrite. Oh, tetrahedrite. Okay, I was going to say. This is the most uh, unusual siderite I've seen. So they found tetrahedrite. What, what else uh, was found uh, in that location? Or? Uh, sphalerite, very nice red sphalerite, some very, very good bournonites, and some extremely good siderites sometimes. Right. And many, many very pale, uh, pale uh, crystals because mag magnesium rich uh, variety okay, of siderite. siderite. Okay. And you, you can notice some extra faces, very, very typical from, uh, from that coal mine. But look at that. The brilliance is amazing. The tetrahedrite sometimes comes out nice and brilliant, but seems to maybe get a little bit dull with time. Um, has, nothing has been done to this. It started brilliant. And it's yeah. finishing brilliant. Yeah, yeah. The, this this come directly from the the family of the miner. And when was this found? Uh, certainly in 1980. 1980. Okay. So over 40 years ago. All right. And at this point, Lamur is only. Uh, worked for just collecting some specimens. It's no, not, no, no. It's, it's, not it's, at all as, now. As it is coal mine, uh, oh, it, it okay. collapses and completely, the deeper levels are completely flooded. Uh, there is no chance to collect anymore, absolutely nothing. Okay, so nothing now. I want to show you something that uh, uh, that, that, that some uh, American, North American collectors uh, like uh, El Boleo. Oh, mine. yes, yes, from the Boleo mine, of course. So maybe it's better to go, to go face in, to in front of the vitrine. The, okay, that sounds good. Let me move this. So this is from the Albert Bélanger, uh, <coughs> excuse me, collection. Albert Bélanger. Um, <laughs> was in the early, early part of the 20th century, yes? Yes, yes. He worked in, at the very, very beginning of the 20th century at the El Boleo mine as a mining engineer. 
and uh, he collects a few minerals, but also not only cumangeite and boleite, but also some uh, rare species like uh, phosgenite okay. or, or uh, brochantite, uh, atacamite, vug, I don't know exactly where, what it is. There is some uh, um, cumangeite on matrix. Uh, Over there, that piece, yeah. And some phosgenite prism. And, and some very strange stuff like dioptase here on chrysocolla. Okay, that's... And uh, we, the family gave me the whole set as a, as a lot. Uh, okay. Uh, a one, a one-shot deal. Uh, they, they want to now to not to keep any more the... So the Cummingi was named after the family of, of the, uh, the mining engineer after uh, Cummings. Cummings, yeah. Cummings. The, the Colonel Cummings. So he was a military man as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and Belanger was one of the mining engineers just after Cummings. Okay. Work, working there. So this is really from the begin, the very beginnings yeah, of yeah, the Boleo yeah. and the discoveries there. That is quite an assembly. There is a very big azurite uh, bowl. I, I think they call them bolos or bolpos. Uh, bolos, bolos, bolos yeah, I, I think, think yeah. yes. That one is quite big, I think, for the locality. So this is a, a spectacular collection. I've never seen so many Comengiites together at one time. Yeah, first of all, there is some very, very, very big, big uh, Comengiites, you know, the Blue Grail. Uh, mm -hmm. um, and, and the rest is a really a very good uh, patrimony collection uh, because uh, some specimens like the phosgenite crystals are not very, very common and I don't know if in many North American museums uh, have these, uh, have yeah. These, yeah. Well, I'm pretty sure that they would love to have some of these pieces, but... Um, we'll see. That's right. But you're 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 selling you're trying to, yeah, to sell as a whole to yeah. keep the collection yeah, together yeah, because it makes sense. This is a really a piece of patrimony. Right, uh, right. So and, and the family is not uh, uh, useful with the mineral uh, collectors of now, so they don't oh. want to be uh, during uh, ten years. Uh, Try right, to send right. one rock after at a time. Yeah. So if they don't know the the people who are involved yeah, yeah, now, yeah, yeah. it's better to to have all of them distributed at one time. Yeah. Uh, but that's whoever acquires that will be, I think, very very proud to own this collection. We'll see. Yeah. Well, Alain, thank you so much for showing us your treasures and. Uh, I believe that you're going to be uh, going with Brian over to the Prestige uh, yeah. exhibition now, and uh, which is the one that's honoring um, the 200th anniversary of uh, Howie's uh, death. death. Yeah, and he's the man who has invented crystallography, if one can say invented, but yeah. um, an amazing man. He was a holy man, uh, an abbot, and I'm sure you will give uh, Brian many more details again. Absolutely. Bon. Merci bien, Alain. Merci. OK, à bientôt. Good morning, Brian. Uh, welcome to uh, my new exhibition of the Sainte Marie aux Mines uh, Mineral Show. Uh, this year, 2022, um, this is the International Year of Crystallography uh, due to the anniversary uh, the 200th anniversary of the death of René Just Aouy, the French uh, crystallographe, which is who is considered uh, as the father of, of crystallography. Um, so it's not a crystallography uh, lesson, uh, don't worry, it's just uh, uh, to show the diversity of, uh, of the crystal forms of the, that minerals can have as you can see in the first uh, showcase. Two uh, perfect cube of parite, 
to the eccentricity of uh, Ar Aragonite. Here we have just a, a little case to speak about uh, René Just Aoui, who died 200 years ago. Um, the legend is that uh, around uh, 250 years ago, Aoui was walking in the museum with a crystal uh, of calcite in his hand, let it drop it down, and uh, looking at the, the dust and the, and the broken crystal, he understand that the broken pieces has, have all the same shape. And this is the, begin, the beginning of the great history of crystallography. At the beginning of crystallography and mineralogy, the, some uh, authors uh, used to wrote very big books with many, many nice drawings. And those books fortunately survived. Uh, some of, of them survive, of course. And here we have the chance to have a, a, a private collector, a, a French private collector who loaned loan us uh, some very nice uh, old books about crystallography. And you can see uh, there is some uh, uh, crystals measured by Descloiseau, Alfred Descloiseau himself. And you can still read the, the index uh, with the old ink on the faces of the crystals. And those two crystals from the National Museum are uh, pictured, uh, exactly pictured in the pages of the Traité de Crystallography of Alfred de Cloiseau. As I said already, crystallography is a science, and science needs tools. And so uh, the first uh, crystallograph have to invent their, uh, their own tools because nothing uh, w was known before. And these are goniometers, uh, historical goniometers made of brass. And these are very, very nice uh, objects. Uh, and some of them are uh, prototype. That means no, only one exemplary known. And this is a collection uh, loaned by the University of Strasbourg, uh, one of our, our usual partners. Crystallography is uh, um, something we, who needs a good uh, view of uh, 3D geometry. And uh, geometry is difficult to imagine sometimes, so they uh, need some models. And 200 years ago, they carved, they, they made carved by artisans, by wood carver. And here, from the uh, collection of the University of Strasbourg, one more time, we have a very, very special series made of glass, uh, paper with glue, and uh, thin uh, bars of uh, irons. So let's speak about uh, the minerals and crystals uh, directly. Right now, you know that there is seven uh, cri crystalline system. And uh, this is the start of the big part of the exhibition. There is many, many specimens and we won't, we, we, we won't see them because too many to, to see uh, with the camera. So let's start with a, a tetragonal, and this is an uh, old uh, calcoparite from uh, Edenville, uh, I think this is New York State. This is an early uh, 19th century uh, specimen from the National Museum of Paris. And uh, hexagonal, cubic, that is called also isometric, uh, trigonal, triclinic, orthorhombic and monoclinic. And so in different vitrines, we put many, many examples of each of those systems. Let's, let's have a look to one of those examples. Here is one of the cubic uh, showcase with, of course, fluorite, uh, halite, uh, uh, sylvite, garnets. 
and more complicated to understand uh, uh, for cubic forms like tetrahedrite or of course native uh, silver uh, which often take some very fancy shapes. In this trigonal uh, showcase, uh, we always use the uh, Saint Mario Mine exhibition as a, an excuse, let's say an excuse, that's very funny to use that word, uh, to show some hidden treasures. And here we have a very big pyrargyrite from Freiberg, hidden in a drawer uh, of the National Museum of Paris. As you can see, this is a quite good uh, specimen of mineralogy and of German patrimony also. In this showcase uh, about the tetragonal uh, system, I want to point you uh, that we exhibit many, many specimens of the original collection of Aui, so 200 years old and they are still uh, glued on their odd original base and some are even oriented uh, as he used them to describe uh, some species at that time. Uh, and it survived uh, 200 years old, uh, 200 years like that, two wars. I think it's quite cool. Minerals are uh, have their fancy uh, way to grow and uh, um, they use sometimes to be joined together uh, uh, or to interpenetrate and we call that twins as certainly most of you know and this is an, a showcase about twins with some uh, historical specimen and some quite cool uh, uh, other stuff, very simple but very nice, like this uh, gypsum from the French Pyrenees. And of course, uh, wooden, old, old wooden models. Crystals are really, really fancy and uh, they also could change their form. Uh, <laughs> more or less, this is uh, not the scientific way to tell it, but they could have the, f the morphology, the habits of one crystal and the composition of another because they, they have been replaced. These are the pseudomorphoses. And we have some, of course, great exemplary here, especially uh, one of our, our French favorites, the big tetrahedrites. Uh, lining and partly uh, replaced by azurite and malachite from the French Pyrenees, from Irasa, one of the three big crystals known. But also some cool stuff from uh, Lorium or for, from France and many, many other places. Uh, super classic like the pseudo of a native copper after aragonite from uh, Coro Coro in Bolivia. And, uh, uh, and of course, the uh, pseudo Galena after Piero from uh, Germany, and many, many, many to discover. Chemistry and physics are not uh, alone in the games, uh, also, the geological history of, uh, uh, of the minerals in their locality, in their uh, deposit, uh, could play a role. Um, and uh, here we show some broken and rehealed crystals, some uh, uh, corroded crystals, some distorted crystals, uh, as this wonderful uh, epidote from Knappenwand in, uh, in uh, Austria, and many, many other uh, mineral oddities due to the, the tectonics uh, movements uh, still working during the growth of the crystals. Last year I spoke with some uh, young collectors uh, who uh, belongs to a Facebook uh, group, Young Minerals C Collectors. This is YMC, not YMCA, don't mix please. 
Um, and uh, I thought that it, w it is interesting to see the, the point of view of young collectors uh, about uh, a world like crystallography, crystal forms. And so this was a kind of uh, uh, exercise. Um, and uh, here is the result. Uh, they have a, a virtual meeting during the year to decide uh, who and uh, what they will exhibit, uh, how. And after one month ago, they sent many uh, packing, uh, many parcels to one uh, guy in France, which was in charge to put in the showcase. And uh, so some specimens came from Canada, United States, France, Belgium, Norway, Sweden, Germany, Czech Republic, and Switzerland. Uh, and one from South Africa uh, has bad luck with, uh, with uh, his parcel, uh, which was sent back, so arrived too late. And it is, it is really quite interesting. Uh, you can see especially uh, Neptunite Twin, uh, very clear and flawless topaz, and some lovely Andradite or uh, Belgium Calcite, very, very perfect twin. Many, many things uh, and very good relationship. And the other good part of the story, because virtual is very cool, especially in those bad times, but many of them were finally able to come here and they will have a dinner, uh, not a virtual dinner, uh, presential, as we say in France, we invented that word, presential. <laughs> uh, they will have a dinner, uh, I think, tomorrow together. And I, th I think this is really uh, something very strong, uh, strong feeling about this, this first exhibition after the two years of, uh, of COVID uh, pandemia. I ask also uh, Marion Copera, a young uh, woman from uh, Reims, the capital, capital of uh, Champagne. Um, she's uh, 28 years old and uh, she used to collect uh, in chassis dumps, for example, and to buy some minerals with uh, her taste and her uh, uh, way of uh, view and feel the, the minerals and especially the crystal forms. And you can see especially a Killer, killer cuprite, skelet skeletal cuprite from Chessy. Pseudo malachite, pseudo after cuprite, the classic of the classic. And, uh, and another very, very unusual uh, azurite pseudo after cuprite from Chessy. And many, many other things. We have the pleasure here of visiting with uh, Nicolas Zilberman of Route Precieuse, Precious Roads a uh, fine gem dealer. And um, the first thing um, I spotted that attracted my attention, I completely misidentified. And uh, Nicolas, fantastic to see you. And uh, looking, you. looking forward to have you explain to me how I was very wrong <laughs> in thinking that we had some tourmalines. <laughs> True. First, uh, I'd like to say that uh, Brian came on this booth, but we already met before. But he recognized me and he came here because of my shirt. He said that well, uh, this is a Hawaiian shirt, and it is not a Hawaiian shirt. This is coming from Zimbabwe. That was just the point I wanted to... Nothing to do with Hawaii. So Brian made a mistake as yeah. well. So yeah. we're both mistaken. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this uh, stone that Eric uh, looked in the showcase is unusual uh, to be seen as a gem and a cut gem and in this color, particularly, well, that one which is small and that one which is 
what to say, a little bit bigger. Uh, unusual because it's very difficult to cut. Very, uh, the hardness is very low. And uh, usually the, um, the color is not like that. This is coming from Sweet Home Mine. This is Colorado stone. And this stone is, of course, rhodochrosite, but very rare and very difficult to, say, to cut, as I said. And there is a special hint. Of course, this is pink, but you get some orangey color inside. And I take out the cover, not touching it, even not touching it with my nail. But you have some hint of orange inside, which is very, very rare. It's an absolutely beautiful stone. Um, I can just imagine how difficult it must be to cut something that soft. A rhodochrosite, a carbonate mineral, is extremely soft. And only Germans cut this. That's right, that's right. <laughs> well, you can trust Germans to cut this. I mean, even French don't know how to cut this. <laughs> ah, the Belgian-French feud is still a while yeah, yeah, yeah. alive. <laughs> wow, that's really superb. I love the colors. The big one particularly really yeah, shows that it one very is a much. Six carat stone, yeah. which is already big. Quite big and, indeed. But okay. there is there are also some other cut stone which come from uh, South Africa. Okay. The name of the mine. From the Enschwaning? Huh? Enschwaning or no, uh, vessels? The, uh, the, Adazel? The yeah, Adazel. Adazel. And, but they are more uh, cherry color. Okay. Super rare, as James told me. Okay. Super rare. I hope I will get one next year. Wonderful. We look forward <laughs> to seeing that. Yeah. Make, I hope to be able to make the comparison, but... Uh, well, maybe you won't have these yeah, anymore true, by then. So. True. Out of that. All right, All right. so you. the next is a combination of GM stones. Yeah, of course, this one is unheated, and this one is heated. Heated. So these are zircons. Exactly. But this strong color of blue got some greenish inside that you can't see at the, at the beginning. You only see blue, mm -hmm. but the green helped to make the combination with this, oh, sorry about it. Together, the green goes with this stone, which makes the perfect combination, the green. That, that is the, really the, nice, yeah. yeah. I, I can see a, a, a beautiful pendant being made, or exactly. even on a bracelet, since it's a hard stone. And this... Um, Zircon is unheard color. This is, I found a word to say, this is found, uh, uh, fauve, a found? You right? found it, yes? No, this is a fauve, the couleur fauve. Fauve, yeah, I don't know how to fauve. translate fauve. I think fauve. it's found. Okay, like lion, uh, like... Uh, oh, oh, oh. Uh, the color of oh, oui, lion. Oui, fauve, oui, oui, a fur. Huh? No, 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 not fur. Fauve is uh, wild animals. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, the uh, lion, tiger. Okay, so this is found. Uh, that should be found. So, very unusual color. And perfect cut. I don't know if you get it, but you got some pink inside. Oh, well, yeah, you pink. can see it right there. Yeah. Actually, this is brown. As soon as you get brown, you get red. As soon as you, can, you get red, you can have pink inside. So this is a way to cut it and to get the, the to get this color. So it takes a special skill to bring out the oh, uh, the oh, other oh. color tints. Yeah, yeah. I'm a Zircon fan, you know, and I always try to find special colors: green, yellow, red, which is super rare, mm -hmm. strawberry. Uh, Sometimes you... I will have to show you my uh, collection of uh, of Zircon. Zircon. Great. That I bought since years. Decades. <laughs> you accumulated over yeah, the years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Excellent. This is opal. This is just, uh, how do you say, picture opal. Picture opal, yeah. This is New York? New York City skyline. Exactly. All the tall buildings. Um, this is New York after the flood. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. You want a game? Yeah. Yeah? You want, well, sorry. 
Mitch Moretti. New York. Right, there you go. New York City skyline. Okay. And New York after the flood. <laughs> Which won't happen, of course. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Another apple? Yeah, this is crazy stuff. Of course, everything is Australian. Australian. You know, I don't know if you will get that. You get it? You get this flash? It's the, the boulder. Okay, so this is... Black is it? black yeah. opal, boulder Not opal. Black. Is it boulder? It's boulder yeah, opal. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Boulder. But when you turn it, you get a green flash, which mm -hmm. is very impressive. You get it, Brian? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's the beauty of opals, that as yeah, you turn them, the color play changes, and it... it it's like... The, uh, the good Nacht uh, 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 a rainbow. No, uh, no? Is it clear? Uh, oh, like lightning. Lightning. Yes, yeah. Lightning. Lightning that we had on New York before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then uh, th this... That's what I love when... The, they just talk to you, the opals, you know? Another one, this one has red in it. And I don't know oranges. what you get. It depends on what you get because it depends where you're looking. Yeah, you looking. have the green, the blue, green, yeah. and oranges. Yeah. So you get some big part of orange. So you, this is unusual because you get orange here, which mm -hmm. is rare, and green. But both of them are here side by side. And then when you turn, you will have other thing. You will have indigo. Yeah, I see blue. You have right. blue. And you will have a peacock blue. Uh, the, peacock the, the, blue, the, yeah, the, 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 the almost fluorescent blue. Right, yeah. exactly. So then it depends how you look at it. Then you will have yellow. Yeah. Now here the orange and the yellows okay. really come out. And, and this is Winton. This is this is Winston to Winton. Wow, right. the color play is unbelievable on uh, this one. Crazy. You got everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did the you get this peacock too? Yeah. You almost need to set that in something where it keeps turning all the time. True. Sure. This is the way. Well, this is unusual to get all the colors on, on, on the same one. I say unusual, rare. Very beautiful. These are Crito Berea, right? Crystal and, it's, and few people care about Crito Berea. This is strong harnet. This is eight. Eight and a half. It's, yeah, pepperoni. it's a very hard stone. Yeah. So it's very hot stone. Few people pay interest to this stone because you know nobody cares. But chrysoberry is a wide range of color. This is, of course, what we know is chartreuse in France. Chartreuse, yes. Which is yellow with a hint of, a hint of green of inside. Green. Greenish chartreuse. And, and a good hot. liquor. Yeah, good liquor too. <clears throat> and then, well, we know we have. Criso, you have Criso, you have Kasai, and you have also, uh, of course, Alexandrite. But here we were, uh, I'm, I'm collecting only Criso burial, and here you can see a, a range of possibility of colors. Here you get some green, which means there is vanadium. Okay. Here, this is more greenish, this is vanadi uh, vanadium uh, uh, bearing, is that right? Uh, vanadifer. With, with iron? With, no, 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 vanadium. Just vanadium. Yeah, va va uh, it, you have vanadium for the color. Mm -hmm. So we say... Uh, vanadiferous, Contient, maybe? Contient Contient vanadium. has vanadium. So vanadiferous, yes. Right. So this is super rare. This one is more greenish, more, more with vanadium. Okay. This is the classical color. And then here you can see you have some yellow and green. So my opinion is that you can find yellow color, of course, this color, you can find green, and then I can show you green. Oh, that one is really green, yeah. That's impressive. Mm -hmm. so. But maybe you get it, but inside you also got blue, because this is green, you have yellow and blue, but here you got strong blue. So which means you have yellow, uh, 
yellow, yellow, yellow and green, green and yellow. So my guess is that you can find some blue in the burial. Okay. And I found it. And there it is. <laughs> So this wow. is super rare color. That one was very rare. But this is super rare color. This is a chrysoberyl vanadium with color change. With a color change. Because so if you the change lighting. from the lighting, but even from if I even from here to the daylight directly, you will have a change color. Okay. You will go deeper in blue. And with the torch. Yeah. Mm, yeah. I hope I will be able to do that. You should have some pink. Oh, yeah. Wow. So That's interesting. this is maybe the first chrysoberyl vanad with vanadium. Vanadium. Uh, color change and going to pink. But you can call it Alexandrite. Because you do, because you have vanadium, you can call it alexandrite. So the the alexandrite has no vanadium in it. Then alexandrite can have it can a tiny bit. Yeah, but here amounts. this is strong vanadium. This is a lot of vanadium in it. So wow, this is that is so interesting. So thank, thank you for educating us. I uh, I love gems, but unfortunately, unlike Eloise, I don't know very much about them. Okay, so, so well. So, so this is the this is the. Well, you know, collecting Creoberry is fantastic and you can find many, 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 many things. different. The range is always, but Creoberry definitely is not yellow. <laughs> That's right. Wow, wonderful. Nicolas, this was really an enlightening experience for me. Thank you so Good. very much. And I'm right sure you. it's a pleasure to meet you. And I look well, forward to seeing you again. Thank Although you. next year, I think the audience hopes Eloise is back because she's really good at gemstones. We are here with Emmanuel Toro, a relatively new lapidarist and uh, gem cutter. Um, and it's a pleasure to see somebody relatively new. Pleasure for me too. And it's nice to meet you. And uh, maybe you can give us a little bit of an idea of uh, the type of work that you do. I'm seeing some beautiful stones here. Thank you, thank you, yes. Uh, ten years ago, I've been in Tucson uh, and I discovered a beautiful gemstone called Big Jasper in Oregon. And since this time, I felt in love with this material and I decided to create my business uh, four years ago. And uh, the idea of my business is to uh, uh, promote uh, beautiful art stones, very unusual and rare. And uh, since uh, two years now, I'm start to cut my cabochon. And uh, the purpose of my work is to promote and make discover these beautiful gemstones. And uh, you can see, uh, you can have all colors, all patterns, and uh, from all over the world, but I, uh, like especially uh, North American gemstones because you can find a uh, very specific material over there. I, I recognize some of the things, obviously the uh, picture jasper, but I see some uh, petrified coral, yeah. some uh, blue opal, and it's, it's pretty amazing. And if you only started cutting a few years ago, you have learned very well. Thank you. Um, when I was younger, I used to do uh, some lapidary work. I still play a little bit. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's really rewarding. Um, I, I like the variety of the material that you have. It's uh, the colors and the patterns. Yeah. Makes for some really interesting pieces. Yes, I try to select my material very... Uh, uh, yes, I, I, uh, I make very good selections and uh, uh, I, I, now... Uh, people know me uh, for my uh, high-grade cabochons right. uh, in France, yeah. So it's good. So you go to these 
you enjoy the travel and yeah, you get yeah, to yeah, pick yeah, sure, of the course. material yeah, yourself yeah, yeah, yeah. from yeah. the people who produce it. And uh, the, the Western United States has a, a large variety of beautiful exactly. material. Exactly. Uh, I, I, I have such with uh, Oregon State. Mm -hmm. And uh, in California, you have uh, also uh, many, many materials, very interesting. Arizona, Utah, and uh, yes. And oh. the, the landscape are beautiful over there. It's a very pleasure each time to go there, to visit the place and to uh, looking for beautiful materials. Yeah, that's wonderful. Well, the landscape in the Western United States is probably some uh, of the most amazing scenery there is. But, you know, for me, born here in France, coming back and going to the mountains and the sea, yeah. it's, it's the same thing as for you to go to the Western U.S. And, exactly, um, exactly, yes. Do you source any material from other continents? Uh, do you go to other places? Yes, actually, I have many material from Indonesia. I have a good okay. friend over there, so I'm buying rough and I, I cut, so uh, the Hot stuff I have now, it's uh, this Blue Lagoon Opal from uh, Java. Oh, yeah. okay, that's a nice color. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, very, mm. I, I, I have bought uh, the rough, it was the two, uh, three kilo block, uh, totally blue like this. I'm going to show you. Okay. Oh my, yeah. So it was a white block like this. All the block was white with a just few uh, broken, broken here. Section, yeah. And so, uh, yes, I bought it uh, one year ago. Okay. And I'm very happy with it. And mm. uh, the police is very good. The color is amazing. And the patterns with dendritic patterns here can make beautiful cabochon as well. Excellent. Yeah. yeah this is Spectacular, of course, when you look at the raw stone, it's never as shiny, um, but th this is pretty good material. When you have the conchoidal fracture, yeah. then you get a much better idea of what the material will look like. Many lapidarists, of course, they wet the stone, yeah, that's and then right. that way you know what it will look exactly, like exactly. so much once it's cut. Yes, well, <laughs> fantastic. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, it was a pleasure. It's a pleasure talking with you. Me we, too. We are here with uh, Gemma and Juan Lopez from Barcelona, uh, who make uh, fantastic free-form type of jewelry. And uh, we're uh, waiting for Juan to give us a uh, a little tour of the latest oh, things, their th latest creation. Thank you very much for your words. Um, all, all, is, uh, uh, all this jewelry that, that, as you can see, is, uh, is made by, are made by, by my sister. Yes. My sister is the third generation of my family, and we are placed in Barcelona. And all that, uh, that, she, that she makes is a uh, unique piece, with, uh, because we, we, love, we love to take, uh, to, 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 to search uh, different kind of stones as Australian boulder opals or or we love uh, uh, also make different uh, different uh, creations with uh, rogue stones as moonstones or lapis lazuli or tourmalines combining the two colors of the tourmaline or um, or labradorite or uh, peridot or um, tanzanite or ruby <laughs> everything everything, everything. Yes, <laughs> aquamarine course. and for us it's very important it's very important to preserve respect the nature in our designs no that's why we love to to make it with uh, with rogue stones uh, because uh, uh, th there are no 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 action no human action in the in the stone no you 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 have the stone and you only make the jewelry adapted to the stone so you make the jewelry to take advantage of the natural features of the stone so there's no cutting, no lapidary involved. Yes, that, that's it. And it's just pure creativity. And she's very creative. Yes, yes, yeah, of course, yeah. of course. Gemma, Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you very much. For me, the natural is the, the artist. Yes. Because he's open. For me, it's a mountain. Yes, and the sun. And the sun is the, the diamond. Sun, yeah. When, when, we, when we look these opals, uh, uh, with the, uh, she, she, she has decided that, uh, oh, uh, Joan, 
This is for, for to make uh, different, different mountains, la landscape of mountains uh, uh, making pendants. She, normally when, when she looks, uh, she, she looks the stones, she, 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 wants, uh, she wants suddenly uh, how we can, uh, we can make with this stone. Mm -hmm. And we, we buy the stones uh, for, uh, and, and we know, she, she knows. Immediately. That, that immediately. Uh, what what is the what is the creation that that, that she will make with this stone? Mm -hmm. This one looks like the Volcan de la Palma. Sí, yeah? Volcan de la Palma. <laughs> yeah. When so very when she when she makes this pendant, I, I I thought so that is Volcan de la Palma because there are a lot of opalescence on top, mm -hmm. and it was at the uh, it was created at the same time that uh, that the, vo the Volcan uh, de, de la Palma was in Europe. Yes, yeah. that's it. Yeah. Another. We try to make uh, we try to make um, different visual uh, poems of nature, as this pendant, for example, that is a, is a, for us is the is the night with uh, the, the lapis lazuli uh, seems the night with a full of, star, of the stars because the, they ha, uh, it has uh, a lot of uh, gold period, yes, yeah. and with the sailing boat and the and the moonstone is the the diamond, no, the full moon. The moon is the, the diamond, moon. yeah. Sorry. And I I like the. Um I don't want to use the word roughness, but uh, the natural, it's, you can tell it's not made with a mold and it's all handcrafted. Uh, the, the jewelry is just spectacular. Ah, thank there's, you very much. There's a nice, nice natural look to uh -huh, it. Thank you very much, Eddie. we don't see very much. Most, thank most you. dealers don't have that. Thank you. Everything is handmade by her. Uh, all, all of pieces are artisanally. Uh, it is a tradition in my family because uh, you know that uh, currently a lot of people has um, m uh, machines of uh, three-dimensional and, right. and you can make everything uh, with the machines, but we are in the opposite size. We are in the, uh, we, 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 we want to preserve our traditional um, uh, uh, concept of my family mm -hmm. through her. Right. So you're true craftsmen. Yes. It's is the English word for that. Yeah. <laughs> the creators of fine jewelry. Yes. For example, new. We have made, we have made this uh, this limited edition collection uh, of pendants uh, representing different uh, parts of um, of uh, landscapes. Uh, we are uh, as you as you as you know. We we are from Barcelona and and we have uh, the Mediterranean Sea uh, in front of us and it's very important the influence because um, for us it's very important the sea and we make different uh, pendants uh, representing the the sailboats and the, and the night and the moonstones but at the same time we have created as well another uh, pendants for uh, representing the autumn for example this one. No, this, this one represents the, 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 the red colors and green colors of, of the, the, the natural bottom. when, when, yeah. uh, when the, the trees are changing uh, the, their... Um, the colors. The, the colors, yes. The leaves change colors the in mountains. the fall. Yeah. So the next thing I hope to see maybe is something that has Montserrat in it. Yes, could because be. Because that, that is very sharp feature. <laughs> yes, because it's very special it's mountain. very, very special in nearby Barcelona. And we, yeah. we think, uh, is an, is a, uh, we are thinking about it, uh, with, uh, to, represent, to represent different parts of uh, our land, Catalonia, mm -hmm. uh, in, in a pendants, no? as Montserrat, or for example, uh, now we, we 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 don't have here a, a, another collection because uh, the, there are uh, the, 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 in this moment is exhibited in uh, in Lleida in a in a city of, mm, of Catalonia, yeah. uh, which is called Festa Major. Mm -hmm. There are there are three uh, there are three pendants who shows the traditional culture of Catalonia uh, without uh, with uh, with um, the traditional popular um, um, holidays of the. Um, major holidays of the, okay. of the villagers. And in this moment, it's exhibited in, in, in Lleida, but uh, we look forward that in the next year, we, w we want to, to exhibit in Munich and, and then present the, the collection in San Maria San as well. Marie. Yes, well, We really look forward to seeing that because it's, it's always an absolute pleasure. Uh, I have to keep Kyoko away because <laughs> she likes so many things that, that you make. Uh, but, you know, that's a good thing to me because uh, every piece that you make, I think, speaks to the people 
and when they see it, they know that it's something that they want. Oh, so. thank you very much, Eric. Yeah. For us, it's the most important that that uh, create a dialogue, uh, a dialogue uh, between right. the stones and, and people. And the it's people. the most important for us. That's really good. Well, Juan, thank you so much again. Th thank you, thank you to Gemma, you. Thank, thank you, you're you welcome. So much. Thank, thank you very much. Or muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. <laughs> That's okay. it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cédric, ça fait plaisir de te revoir de nouveau. Et puis, une autre exposition photographique euh, qui me paraît vraiment fantasmique. Eh bien, merci beaucoup. So, we're here with Cédric Leur, who, just as a few years ago, has another fantastic photographic exhibit here. This year, it's quite different, however, in that we're looking at scanning electron microscope image, um, as opposed to regular photography of inside a mine, uh, which we filmed a few years ago. So I'm going to turn back to Cédric and, and start to ask for some uh, details of what has happened uh, in, in producing this exhibit. On voudrait euh, avoir une, une, une... Alors, on a l'habitude de voir des expositions, enfin l'habitude. So the idea behind this exhibit is that most of the time we see pictures of macroscopic minerals, in other words, large specimens that we can see with the naked eye. Uh, but the public at large rarely, if ever, gets to see photographs that were taken with a scanning electron microscope, which is designed to basically look at items that are smaller than a human hair, for example. And so this was the general idea here to, to link both the scientific aspect, as well as the aesthetic of beautiful minerals. So the value added here is that scanning electron microscope images are basically black and white. Uh, this has to do partly with the process uh, of preparing a sample for SEM work. Um, and the general public, of course, prefers to see things as they might appear if you had a larger sample. And so the idea here was to put artificial coloring or colorization of the images uh, so that they would appear as if larger specimens were being photographed. This was a, uh, a multi-member uh, team, uh, including uh, scientists from the University of Lorraine uh, who did uh, the actual microscopic uh, examinations and were also involved in the technical production of the images. Of course, uh, we have Cédric Leur, and who chose many of the samples that were going to be um, selected along with Xavier. Yes. And uh, who is uh, the director here of the uh, exhibit and the mine as well. And... Um, there were really maybe a dozen or more people mm -hmm. involved uh, to generate the photos that you can admire uh, in this exhibit. One of the other things that's absolutely critical for people to realize is how small these specimens really are. And if you look at each image, there's a scale bar. On this one, it's over here. And this one is basically the size of a human hair. And so this particular mineral specimen is very small. You can't see the full image above, but the scale bar represents the same size here. And so this is a much larger specimen, of course. And then the images next to them, um, not all of them, but you, uh, some of them have the SEM stub, which is the little device on which you mount your samples mm -hmm. and the sample itself pinned in so that the general public can get an idea of what one of these pieces looks like. Now, in terms of this particular one, which refers to the olivonite specimen, which is a, an, an arsenate, um, this scale is not that large um, or not that small, I should say. So this is actually a piece that you can see with the naked eye, but you really couldn't distinguish any of its features. So along with Cédric Leur, 
Uh, we have Xavier Rustenholz, who was also involved in the selection of the specimens here. Um, he is the uh, director of um, this particular establishment, the uh, Tellure, uh, which is sitting on an old mine uh, from four or five hundred years ago before. And you can do tours in this particular mine. A very interesting mine. The last time I did a tour, I'm short, but I had to go like this to get into some of the tunnels that were all hand-picked. So this is quite an establishment. And these gentlemen did an absolutely amazing job putting this exhibit together. So, félicitations. Um, C'est un travail formidable. Et c'est vraiment beau. Hein? Je crois que le grand public va vraiment apprécier. Merci. So the general public, I'm sure, will find this to be a fantastic exhibit. Brian has a small gift for you, and okay. we want to offer you a little memo yes. of what we have been doing, and so. Yes, I was it looks like it's expecting it this gift. I was expecting this gift. <laughs> this is wonderful. It's going to look very good on you. Yes, thank you very much. So, there you are. It's a pleasure. I will wear it. I will good, wear it uh, next year. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. I promise. <laughs> That's great.